today was Florida's dominance over Tennessee, a score of 59 to 20. And I think one of the questions coming into today's game was how would Tim Tebow treat this game? It was his first big test against an SEC opponent. He played outstanding, 14 and 19, 299 yards in the air and two touchdown passes. He also ran for two touchdowns. An excellent game for Tim Tebow, played fantastic. And this Florida team looked very, very good early on in the SEC schedule. All right, so our game coming up, Boston College and Georgia Tech. Big game for Boston College because it's their third conference game of the season. They didn't schedule the non-conference games early on, but they do have four non-conference games coming up so if they can get a win tonight over Georgia Tech they're three and zero in conference play with those wins in their pocket for the stretch run later on I'll tell you what I, I like this matchup Georgia Tech fourth best rushing offense right now against Boston College fourth best rushing defense something has to give but in the end I like to shard choice I like Taylor Bennett making plays today for Georgia Tech to win this football game all right let's head to Atlanta we'll see you at halftime it's Boston College and Georgia Tech Welcome to Atlanta, a big pro sports town, but tonight the spotlight shines squarely on Georgia Tech. The 50 Brent Yellow Jackets made the march to Bobby Dodd Stadium earlier today, ready for one of the biggest home games in recent years. For the first time, two ranked and undefeated schools will meet on the Tech campus. ACC rival BC is in town, and for Eagles quarterback Matt Ryan and Tech running back to Sharp Choice, it's their time to shine. Jones along with Bob Davey. Welcome aboard. Stacey Dale is joining us in just a few. Bob, this is really one of the more unique settings in the college football landscape in amongst all these high rises and high hopes for both of these teams tonight. Mark, I'll tell you about this game. This may be the best game in the country that nobody outside of Atlanta is really talking about. The reason this game is under the radar, when you think of the Atlantic Coast Conference, you think of traditional powers, you don't really think of Georgia Tech and Boston College. Miami, Florida State, Virginia Tech, they get a lot of publicity, but right now the best two teams in the ACC are going to be playing on this field right here below us tonight. Yeah, one of those teams, Boston College, averaging about 37 points a game coming into this one. Matt Ryan doing a great job at quarterback. I talked about this game being under the radar. So is Matt Ryan. Has not got a lot of national of attention, but I promise you, people in the ACC know him. Led the ACC in total offense last year. Preseason pick to be the most valuable player in the league this year. Mark, he is an NFL quarterback. I cannot wait to watch him against this Georgia Tech defense. Well, speaking of Georgia Tech, everyone along Techwood Street down here last year had Calvin Johnson's name on their lips. All Tashar Choice did at running back was lead the conference in rushing. Hey, one thing you know, Georgia Tech's going to run the football. Tashar Choice is going to get a lot of carries. Last year, he led the ACC in rushing. He's off to a great start this year, 196 yards in South Bend against Notre Dame. Nine straight 100-yard games. He's one of those backs, Mark. The more he gets it, the stronger he gets. Tashar Choice, one of the leaders of that Georgia Tech Yellow Jacket team, trying to validate their early season success coming into this game at 2-0 and, oh, and for either Georgia Tech or Boston College it will be time after this game to celebrate. Let me 
miss you already. I know, baby, but this isn't goodbye, okay? I wish you didn't have to go. Shh. I'll be back. What's that? I just Orbit's telling me my flight's delayed. Guess we have more time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I gotta get Yeah, I'm gonna hit the duty-free shop. I'll call you. Orbit's TLC gives you free updates to keep you a step ahead. Only at Orbit's.com. Man, I really missed watching the Steelers every Sunday. So I switched to DirecTV and got NFL Sunday ticket this season. Dear Diary, I want my NFL Sunday ticket and my home team. Join now and get four months free of our best TV package with DirecTV's NFL Sunday ticket. What a burger lover loves to hear. Three cuts of prime beef, ground fresh, grilled perfectly. It's our triple prime burger. Order it right now, and our endless fresh garden bar is yours free. You heard it right, free. Ruby Tuesday. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Orbits.com. Orbits, keeping you a step ahead. And ESPN Game Plan. See the most college football every Saturday. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. ESPN Game Plan lives here. At Bobby Dodd Stadium in the city of Atlanta, getting set for Georgia Tech and Boston College, a pivotal ACC battle. And Stacey Dales, when it comes to success, you can't spell it without the S, as in seniors, right? <laughs> No question, Mark. You know, we had a talk, chance to talk to some of the Georgia Tech players yesterday, and I, I asked senior defensive end Adam Oliver, what would make this season special? And he said, well, this is a special season because we have 18 seniors returning on this roster. He said, hey, this is our year, but he said this is also a special season because we really love our head coach, Chan Gailey. They really admire this guy, and as a result, they went to him before the season started and asked coach, hey, well, coach, will you march us onto the field this year? Guys, never before has Chan Gailey marched a team onto the field. You see him right here. He got a little misty-eyed yesterday when I asked him about it. He was honored. He was privileged. And guys, I guess you could substitute to say that a win here would perhaps make this season special, Mark. Yeah, Georgia Tech, Stacy, looking for some big things this year. 39-27, and 27, Chan Gailey in his sixth season as the head coach here on the flats at Georgia Tech. As Boston College won the opening toss, deferring to the second half. That is Billy Bennett kicking off back deep. It's Corey Earls and Jonathan Dwyer. And this will go out the back of the end zone. And Georgia Tech's going to start off on its own 20-yard line for the first series of the ball game. Well, Taylor Bennett is their starting quarterback. Still a bit of an unproven quantity. Just three and one as a starter. And uh, he showed a lot of promise in his first start last year in the bowl game where he went 19 out of 29 for 326 yards. But uh, he has yet to throw a touchdown pass this year. Including about 59% of his passes. First down and 10. Bennett rolls out and completes his first pass of the game at around the 37-yard line. And now a look at the offense of Georgia Tech, intro by Jason Veritek. You've heard already about the shard choice. This guy might be a Heisman candidate. But don't forget about Mike Cox, the senior, leads the way for Tashard. He's one of the best blocking fullbacks in the country. Up front, we've got an experienced O-line, led by last week's ACC Offensive Lineman of the Week, Andrew Gardner, and senior center Kevin Tuminello. Sorry, Boston. Got a root for my boys, my alma mater, Georgia Tech. A little bit of ambivalent feelings, uh, you would think, but not quite. That pass incomplete and out of bounds to the 39-yard line. Greg Smith, the intended target, and uh, it's going to be second down and 10. The receivers for Georgia Tech, Baba, with a little bit of something to prove in this game. Well, Mark, I think so does this quarterback, Taylor Bennett. He's only thrown two, 32 passes in two games this year. A big part because Georgia Tech has run the ball so successfully. But a kid that only played one year of high school football, his fourth year in the program, he sat behind Reggie Ball. He's still untested, Mark. All right, Bob, the three-receiver formation here on second down and 10. Taking his time at the line of scrimmage. Audibling has a little bit of heat on him and throws a great touch pass. Was it inbounds? They're going to rule it a catch at the 48 yard line by tight end Colin Peak. And now a look at the defense of Boston College introduced by the views Elizabeth Hasselbeck. Now for the Boston College defense. The view.
on our 4-3 defense is looking pretty good. It's led up front by junior Ron Brace, who lost 10 pounds in the offseason and now weighs a sturdy 325. The linebacker core is centered around team captain Jolon Dunbar, who was originally recruited as a running back. The secondary is one of the most experienced in the ACC. Senior Juwan Tribble earned National Defensive Player of the Week honors earlier this season after intercepting three passes against Wake Forest. So let's hear it for our Eagles. All right, Elizabeth, uh, former BC alum. Tashar Choice running that out of bounds. And Elizabeth, captain of the softball team when she was at Boston College. A little scouting report on her from their athletic director, Gene DiFilippo, said pretty good player. <laughs> Had some injuries, though, lingering. <laughs> of course, uh, married to uh, a quarterback in the name of Hasselbeck, Tim Hasselbeck. Second down and 10 coming up for Georgia Tech. Single back formation. Screen pass well set up to Shachar Choice. And Choice has the first down for Georgia Tech. Down at the Boston College 37-yard line. Good patience that time as Georgia Tech picks up 11. And, and really, Mark, this is pretty much a running play. You see Taylor Bennett, a deep drop, just a little underneath screen right there to Tashar Choice. Pretty creative as far as throwing the football here early in this game because everyone in this stadium expected Georgia Tech to come out and try to run this football. Yeah, Georgia Tech operating under first-year offensive coordinator John Bond. Choice. One of the team leaders, one of the vocal team leaders. Little play fake this time from Bennett. Downfield. And incomplete at the five yard line. Tried to hit his tight end again. Peak. And that one incomplete. Broken up nicely in the middle of the field. It'll be second down and 10. Paul Anderson defending the play. Mark, he had Colin Peak early down the scene, but because he takes so long and hangs the ball up, the safety, Paul Anderson, is able to come over the top. Right now, if that ball's thrown on time, it's a completion. Just delayed a little bit and hung that football up there. Hey, Bob, look at this one run and five passes. A flip of the script compared to their two previous games. Second down and 10. Grant in motion. They hand it off to Choice. Finding a nice seam over the left side of that offensive line over Rhodes and Gardner. Tashar Choice had 196 yards in their first game against Notre Dame, a 33-3 win. Last week against Samford, uh, he went for over 100 yards once again in just over one quarter of play and didn't have a problem sitting out the rest of the game. And you know what? We were all impressed yesterday just with his personality, Mark and his energy. He is a young guy that has a lot of enthusiasm. He is the team's hype man. He gets them pumped up. A lot of fire and brimstone in the locker room before the game. Here he is again. No fire and brimstone there. It's met with equal force by Tyrone Pruitt. Pruitt, the 5'11 senior linebacker, stuffing that play before it had a chance to develop. And fourth down coming up for Georgia Tech. They'll punt. Mark, that was a great open field tackle by Tyrone Pruitt right there. He defeats the block of Demarius Thomas, number eight. And anytime you throw those swing passes, those wide receivers have to block. That is a look at Durant Brooks running for Georgia Tech, one of the top punters in the nation. Averaging over 47 yards per so far this year. And uh, maybe more impressively, good net punting numbers, has four punts inside the 20-yard line this year. Back deep, that's Dewan Tribble. He's going to try and hang this one up again. And it'll be met with great success at the five-yard line. Durant Brooks, we talked about his punting prowess. No wonder he's a candidate for the Ray Guy Award. Tony Clark downs it at the five. And that's where Matt Ryan's going to start the offense for Boston College. The preseason All-ACC quarterback and pick. And the player of the year in the conference, including about 55% of his passes coming into this game. He started off the year with a bang against Wake Forest, had five touchdown passes with over 409 total yards. First down and 10 for Boston College. James McCluskey, the lone back behind Ryan. Out of the backfield, and it's completed the 10-yard line. And a fumble, it's going to be ruled down. Andre Callender made the catch and picked up five yards, and he got whacked there by Georgia Tech's defenders. 
Philip Wheeler was one of the guys there. The second down and about five coming up. Mark Matt Ryan in this age of running quarterback, spread offense quarterbacks, he is a true drop back quarterback. See what he gets done here on second down. Hands it off to Callender. Callender cuts back, gains about three. It'll be third and about two coming up. And now let's meet the Boston College offense and back to uh, Elizabeth Hasselbeck. Now for the Boston College offense. The Eagles have some pretty good quarterbacks. Hey, I even married one. Senior Matt Ryan is another great one at the Heights. He is currently fourth on the BC all-time passing list. The offensive line features senior Gosder Sharulis. He started 37 games at right tackle, but this season he will protect Matt Ryan's blind side on the left. Go Boston College. Mark, if we could get Rosie O'Donnell <laughs> to do Georgia Tech's defense, we'd have something going on right now. You'd probably get a scouting report on her, too. That pass wide open and complete. Deloitte puts two hands on the ball and travels into Georgia Tech territory across midfield. John Lloyd with a great catch and wonderful execution as they picked up 41. And Mark, this is a bust in coverage. You talk about wide open. There's not even a gold shirt in the picture until right now. I mean, that is uncharacteristic, to say the least, of this Georgia Tech defense. First down and 10 for Boston College at the 47 of the Yellow Jackets. Ryan with plenty of time to pass out of the backfield. That's Purvis, his other tight end, and Purvis makes it down to the 41-yard line. Got about seven on the play, and back to Jason Veritek to introduce the defense for Georgia Tech. The Jackets play a 4-3 defense. We'll need Daryl Robertson and Adam Oliver to get a rush on BC quarterback Matt Ryan who can flat and get it done. At linebacker, Phil Wheeler is a man in the middle. The senior is a tackling machine who goes sideline to sideline. And in secondary safety, Jamal Lewis and DJ Jones lead the way. They're best friends and roommates, too. Let's go, Jackets. Uh, allegiances or something, huh, from Allen? Ryan incomplete through the arms of his intended receiver. Third down and four. And that, once again, rears its ugly head. The drop passes last week, they had seven drop passes, Bob, against North Carolina State, and uh, hence leaving a lot of yardage potentially on the field. Mark, in the disappointing part, they had great pass protection against the Blitz, but Clarence Megwell right there, you said it. They spent a lot of extra time this week after practice on the Jugs machine, but you really can't simulate what it's like under these lights. Now, the Jugs machine doesn't include 55,000 people here. Andre Callender, the lone back beside Matt Ryan. Third down and four. Would have been a heat dive up by John Tenuta, but they couldn't get to Ryan in time, and they convert the first down at the 24-yard line. Kevin Challenger made sure to hang on to that one, picking up 16. He was working against Morgan Burnett. It all starts with pass protection. John Tenuta brings Philip Wheeler as the fifth rusher up there at the top, 41. Pretty good job of protection by Andre Callender, the running back. And is there any question about Matt Ryan's arm strength? That is a beautiful throw and catch to Kevin Challenger. Projected by many people to be a first-round pick this April in the NFL draft. Ryan, four of five passing. This is Callender chopped down behind the line of scrimmage at the 28-yard line. Andre Callender, the team's leading rusher coming into this game, had 158 yards and a couple of touchdowns last week in their victory against North Carolina State. A, a very emotional victory, Bob, for Boston College against their former head coach. And you know, Mark, that was huge. I mean, as we go ahead and roll this, I want you to watch Gary Guyton, the outside linebacker, submarine right there. But you talk about this Boston College team opening up against Wake Forest at home. And then Tom O'Brien in North Carolina State coming to Chestnut Hill. That was two huge games for a new head coach, Jeff Jagodinsky. Second down and 13. Ryan fires complete. And a missed tackle. Out of 
out-of-bounds challenger at the three-yard line. Avery Roberson missed that tackle, which allowed challenger to pick up a few more yards. And it's first and goal for Boston College after that 24-yard pickup. Mark, a lot of people minimize how important it is for a defensive back to tackle. It's just as important as pass coverage as you see Avery Robertson right there miss the tackle on number 84, Kevin Challenger. This is not a typical Georgia Tech defensive effort right now early in this game. This is Whitworth. And Whitworth gets close. No signal yet. They're going to mark it down inside the one-yard line. It'll be second down and goal, LV Whitworth. With the carry is Andre Callender getting a breather this play. Whitworth missed a little bit of early season action because of the fact that uh, they had a hamstring injury. Missed the season over against Wake Forest, but had 59 yards rushing, averaging about four a pop last week. How about this drive? It started on the five yard line. Georgia Tech's helped them a little bit, more, particularly in the secondary, but what an impressive opening drive right here. A lot of questions about how Boston College would handle that so blitz pressure. No problem so far. Wide open and overthrown by Ryan. He had Whitworth wide open. That was six. And it'd be third and goal coming up. Mark L.V. Whitworth is a tailback, but I believe they lined him up at fullback that time and just snuck him out in the flat. He beats Morgan Burnett, the true freshman. He's wide open, just, you know, should have kept running. Yeah. Looked like he turned back and started backpedaling early. McCluskey and Whitworth in the backfield. They give it to Whitworth. Touchdown, Boston College. L.V. Whitworth with the six. And the silence here at Bobby Dodd Stadium is deafening. The opening salvo fired by the Boston College Eagles. Whitworth with his second rushing touchdown this season, the 16th of his career. And for their head coach, Jeff Jagosinski, a picture-perfect scripted opening drive. 13 plays for the score. Oppenovicius, the team's place kicker, with the extra point good. And Boston College in this pivotal, albeit early, ACC Conference game. A game many people think could be a preview of the championship game in Jacksonville later. Boston College leads 7 0. The first sport utility vehicle. The first full time four wheel drive. And now, Jeep introduces the industry's first lifetime powertrain warranty. It's the best warranty in the business, and no other car company matches it. So come and check out our largest lineup of Jeep vehicles ever with our exclusive lifetime warranty. Now, well-qualified buyers can get 0% financing for 72 months on Jeep Commander. <laughs> this group, come on! It's not easy going it alone. That's why we're making it easier than ever to get a State Farm agent for car insurance. Call an agent's office 24-7. Stop by or go to statefarm.com to get an agent who's there for you. Online, on the phone, or in the office. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. First ultra adaptable room from Marriott. The extreme power of Energizer Lithium, the world's longest lasting AA battery and high tech devices. Energizer, keep going. This Friday, oh, get ready. Ah! Get physical. Good luck, Chuck. Rated R. Theaters Friday. <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings. You have to be here. Home. 
means different things to different people. Whatever it means to you, you'll find it on our homepage, century21.com. Century 21, the gold standard. This ESPN2 telecast is available in brilliant high definition on ESPN2 HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro. Well, the Eagles soaring high right now. That's the first team that scored in the first quarter this year against Georgia Tech. And look at the scoring drive. One of the key plays made by tight end John Lloyd. 11 plays, 95 yards, eclipsing about four and a half minutes on the clock. And Boston College makes a huge opening statement in this ballgame. Let's see if Georgia Tech can answer. This is the freshman, Jonathan Dwyer. Had a big week last week on the ground. Is chopped down. At the 28-yard line. He's mark a big play in that drive. John Lloyd to tight end. Catches. Watch the corner. He's going to jump up. He's supposed to have the deep outside third. And now the tight end, Lloyd, is wide open. Watch the corner right here with the play action. He jumps up. I mean, there is no one, no one within 15 or 20 yards. I believe that was the freshman, true freshman, Morgan Burnett, number one, as we look at that big 265-pound tight end over there. Heads hanging a little bit on the sidelines uh, for Georgia Tech. 8.08 to go here in the first period. Choice stopped up behind the line of scrimmage at the 25-yard line. By escape. Austin College a little bit fired up. A red zone alert. USC leading Nebraska. And it looks like they're threatening to go in once again on Nebraska's six-yard line. Boy, what about USC? Uh, yeah. Ticking like a metronome so far. Well, ticking like a what? A metronome. You know those things you use in a beat? I got you. <laughs> in rhythm. I got you. I'm with you. And Bennett is split out as a wide receiver. We've seen Georgia Tech do this formation several times. Ten against Notre Dame. They hand it off on the end around. That's Grant. And Grant gets out over the 33-yard line, brought down by Francois. They picked up eight on the play. Bob, this play really comes as no surprise, though, this formation, does it? Mark, you watched the tape with me. Georgia Tech did this ten times against Notre Dame. They put the quarterback, Taylor Bennett, out here. They put the running back in the backfield. Here's the new wrinkle right here is the direct snap, then the reverse. But, I mean, ten times against Notre Dame, and you saw it. How discombobulated that had Notre Dame's defense. Yeah, that time, Bob, it appeared that Boston College at least seemed to be in socket and lined up okay. Big advantage, Mark, to have seen that on tape, no doubt. On second, third down and five. Bennett completes the pass, and the ball is loose. What's the ruling? It was Demarius Thomas hung on to it after bobbling it at the 40, and he picks up the first down as a result, picking up seven. They love Demarius Thomas, this freshman wide receiver. This is a great timing route on the curl. Dwayne Tribble comes in and pops that ball out. Georgia Tech, very fortunate that ball bounced back to number eight right there. Yeah, the receiving core, including Thomas and Greg Smith and James Johnson with a lot to prove coming into this contest. Bennett once again split out wide to the top of your screen. Tashar Choice lining up as the quarterback out of the shotgun. Hands it off to Grant. Rashawn Grant playing his first game of the season tonight. Brought down by Marcellus Bowman. And what about the change in play calling this year, Bob? It's no longer get it to Calvin Johnson hey, anymore, right? We're going to Tech. <laughs> I don't care if he's here or not. He's in Detroit right now, but you have to talk about Calvin Johnson, right? Yeah. Great athlete, great player. Had a touchdown catch last week for the Detroit Lions, the second overall pick in last April's draft. And I'll tell you, one of the greatest young men you will ever be around is Calvin Johnson. And Taylor Bennett and the rest of the crew get it done on offense in his absence. A little counterplay to Shaw Choice brought down. With Brady Smith making the stop for Boston College. Mark, it was interesting yesterday, just getting back to the Calvin Johnson thing. You know, as good a player, great player as he was, great person in some ways, this sounds crazy, but it's a little bit easier to coach the offense at Georgia. You're right, it does sound crazy. Well, I know. <laughs> but Chan Daly verified it yesterday with me because you know what? There's so much pressure every week to get it to Calvin, get it to Calvin. You get out of sync offensively. Now you're more balanced. Are you buying it? 
You know, really biting on that. I wouldn't mind if he was still here from a Georgia <laughs> Tech fan. Taylor Bennett going downtown to Smith and couldn't come up with the ball. It was out of bounds. Dewan Tribble defending on the play. And I'll tell you, Dewan Tribble now is a big time player. 14 career interceptions. And Chan Gailey went right after Dewan Tribble. I really thought they'd throw the ball on the other side at Taji Morris, number 29. This guy right here is a playmaker. Had three interceptions last week in that game against North Carolina State was the National Defensive Player of the Week. One of the real rocks, one of the beacons in that defensive secondary for Boston College. Evan Challenger back deep for this punt for Boston College. Wow. And that was a rocket by Durant Brooks that travels into the end zone, 58 yards and all. It figures that Ray Guy is actually a family friend of Durant Brooks. He's been getting some lessons. Back with more after this. It's finally here. The Jeep model year end clearance with no interest for six years on Rugged Commander. Or get a great deal on Sporty Liberty and luxurious Grand Cherokee. And now, for the first time ever on 2007 Commander, well-qualified buyers can get 0% financing for 72 months. That's no interest for six full years. Add that to the best warranty in the business, our exclusive lifetime powertrain warranty. And that's an offer no one else matches. Hurry, the Jeep model year-end clearance ends soon. Introducing the all-new Helio Fin. With GPS-enabled Google Maps, Fin lets you know where you are. With simple search, you can find the nearest coffee shop or pizza place. And Finn keeps you moving with traffic reports along the way. All delivered quickly over a nationwide 3G network. The new Finn, built by Samsung, supercharged by Helio. Check it out at Helio.com. How much do you pay when you buy a stock? Does the rate change depending on how often you trade or how much you have in your account? At TD Ameritrade, there's only one price for online stock trades, $9.99. No matter how often you trade, no matter how much money you have in your account. Straightforward pricing from TD Ameritrade. Independence is the spirit that drives America's most successful investors. Give it to me, give it to me, one, two, three. Introducing Applebee's new Ultimate Trios. Great taste, great big portions, and a great price. Choose three from seven delicious options to create your ultimate flavor fest, like our new 100% Angus beef mini bacon cheeseburgers, new crispy, plump, and spicy dynamite shrimp, and the new flame-grilled steak quesadilla tower. Ultimate trios, ultimate platter at an unbeatable price. Only at Applebee's. Give it to me, give it to me, one, two, three. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Jeep. With seven Jeep vehicles, there's one for you. And the ultra-thin Helio Fin by Samsung. Don't call it a phone. Look at the Georgia Aquarium, the world's largest and most engaging aquarium. It had 8 million gallons of fresh and marine water and more aquatic life found in any other aquarium in the country. Bob, the goal is to be one of those sharks in there. <laughs> A handoff on first and ten to L.V. Whitworth. They go on the ground, but Stacy, what about those Boston College receivers? Well, Mark, you and Bob have documented the drops. Last week there were seven of them. They gave up, they told us, a touchdown in 75 yards. So I talked to Brandon Robinson, wide receiver, junior wide receiver. He told me this week, yeah, the emphasis was catching balls. They spent about 45 minutes after practice on Tuesday catching, oh, about 75 to 100 balls out of the jugs. And he said it wasn't the coaches that got on us if we dropped them. It was each other. And certainly Matt Ryan, a big part of that, Mark. Yeah, nothing works as well as peer pressure, Stacey. And Mark. Clarence Megwa had the drop on the first drive early, but then they came back and made two or three really great catches. So that judge is paying off a little bit right now. Certainly is paid off on that one, too. Nice catch on the play by Ganell. Zinged it in there against Jai Word. Let's go back to that last drive, Mark, and just look at some of these receivers. I mean, that was pretty easy right there to the big tight end, John Lloyd. That in a combination, some missed tackles by Georgia Tech really led to that opening 95-yard drive. You see the big missed tackle right there by Avery Roberson. And one thing you'll notice about Matt Ryan, a quarterback, a.k.a. Matty Ice, as his teammates call him, he will try to 
put it in there like a BB through a keyhole. As his coach Jankosinski says, Whitworth on the run, brought down by Philip Wheeler. And you know, he got a lot of respect, I can remember, as a freshman, Bob. And in particular, there was a situation where the week before the Notre Dame game, football-wise, they were playing against Notre Dame. The hockey team was playing against Notre Dame, too. Had a little free-throw shooting contest between the hockey team and the football team. His teammates nominated him to go up there and do the job for the basketball team. Guess who ends up winning? Yeah. You're telling me the right. hockey team had a free-throw shooting hey, contest? Hey, he beat somebody. I mean, the hockey team, now, he won. They believed in him. And he believes in his receiver here, Ryan, complete deep into tech territory. Robinson hung on to it. The first thing, Mark, excuse me, he gets a great block from Andre Callender. I mean, it all starts with protection. Right there, he gets a great block. And then Stacy was talking about Brandon Robinson and that jug machine. A jug machine could not throw the ball better than this. I mean, that is a tremendous throw right there they beat jahi ward daniels the corner mark first down and 10 after that 46 yard pickup that was an nfl big time throw right there number two quarterback on the big board by mel kuyper into the end zone and incomplete over the head and there's a flag on the play it was intended for rich Gunnell. this one looks like it's going to be a holding call against the right tackle costanzo Michael Johnson was coming off the edge there with a little bit of heat. Mark the true freshman offensive tackle, Anthony Costanzo. He has his hands full. Time. Holding on the offense. Number 74. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Big Costanzo 74 right here. True freshman. Went to Fork Union out of high school. He's only 220 pounds out of high school. But Michael Johnson at about six foot six, and Adam Oliver both coming that time. A little heat coming from Georgia Tech after the first penalty of the game. The pass complete and tiptoeing down the sidelines and pushed out of bounds at about the 12-yard line is Clarence Megwa. Megwa factoring into the equation, picking up 17, and they get a good chunk of that yardage back after the penalty. A concerned look etched across the face of Chan Gale. Georgia Tech really gets a break right here as Clarence Megwa catches the ball. Ward Daniels, another missed tackle. Let's watch it. Oh, yeah. They're stepping out of bounds. But those corners missing some tackles. Second and three, Ryan. Complete once again down to the seven yard line and once again using his tight end, Ryan Purvis. And it's first down and goal for Boston College. Bob, we heard so much about John Tenuta, the team's defensive coordinator, and the zone blitzes. The effectiveness of that so far is? Well, the thing is, he's playing a quarterback that you can see because he's dropped back, stands in that pocket, reads the entire field. He's tough to pressure. I mean, he's not running around scrambling. He just plants his feet and sets it. And he's, he, he sat there too long that time. They got him that time, and Wheeler recovers the loose ball on the sack. Georgia Tech football. Mark a broken pass protection by Boston College. Daryl Robertson, also known as the stick man, came up with that big sack. Well, the stick man stomping like Buford Pusser that time, using his big stick to make the big sack on Matt Ryan. Taste it, the authentic Italian flavor of Papa John's new Italian meats trio pizza with our fresh hand tossed dough. Three cheese blend, zesty robusto sauce. Italian ham, salami, and spicy Italian sausage. Taste our new Italian Meats Trio pizza for just $11.99. Call or click papajohns.com and save Papa's Plus to add an order of cheese sticks for just $4 more. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Good evening. Hey, man. Uh, you got the tape? Yes. It's in my dojo. <laughs> Thanks, bud.
I didn't know a yellow belt could happen. I'm trying. Do you know game day? Go to collegegameday.com to find out. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, Saturdays at 10 a.m. NBC's Fall Preview Show is now available on demand and online. And watch NBC's hottest new shows on demand before they air, including Chuck. This can't be right. Life. Life was his sentence, and life is what he got back. <laughs> Journeyman. I go on these trips. Through time. And Bionic Woman. How am I doing now? Only with Comcast Digital Cable. Nearly 85% of meth labs are found with the help of informants and concerned citizens. The rest find us. Learn more at drugfree.org slash meth. Georgia Tech's defense giving a reprieve to the offense. On the bench, Darrell Robertson with a big sack causing the fumble a few moments ago. Taylor Bennett hands it off to Choice. And not much of one on that play. He was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. If that, might have lost one on the play. Mark John Tenuta will drive you crazy. Boston College is really going to slide the protection to the right. And he brings two guys off the back side in the running back, Andre Callender, at two to block. They end up turning Daryl Robertson loose and just hit him right in the back right there. Choice now has rushed the ball, meanwhile, Bob, five times for a total of minus one yards. Bennett completes it. Out of bounds at the 16-yard line is peak as we go back to Stan Verrett for this update. All right, Mark, the number one and number two teams in the nation, both in action. Let's show you USC and Nebraska first. John David Booty to Stanley Havili for the touchdown. And the Trojans with a 7-0 lead on Nebraska. And LSU with a 10-0 lead on Middle Tennessee. Ryan Perilou in at quarterback, 5 of 7, and a touchdown pass to Charles Scott. All right, Stan Perilou, one of the highest recruited players a couple of years ago. I believe the top-rated quarterback in high school two years ago, finally getting an opportunity. 1-11 to go in the first quarter. Georgia Tech has not scored, trailing 7-0. Bennett and Chiris couldn't hang on to it at the 20-yard line. And Georgia Tech, Bob, a little bit disconcerted right now offensively. No question. And, Mark, let's go back to that USC-LSU playing tonight. I think there's four teams in this country right now that are at a different level. USC, LSU, Oklahoma, and Florida. Those four teams, I think there's a pretty significant gap after those four. Good point. As, uh, Florida looked quite dominant today against Tennessee. Third punt of the night for Brooks from his own six and air mails this one out to the 35 yard line where DeWan Tribble calls for the fair catch for Boston College. Boston College with a history of very uh, proficient, productive quarterbacks through the years. Remember, this guy works for us now. Number 22. How many times have we seen this heroic heave? I tell you, you never get tired of watching it, though, do you? Glenn Foley in the early 90s up to 93. Matt Hasselbeck, 94 to 97. Brian St. Pierre taking him into the new millennium in 2002. And the latest in that lineage now is Matt Ryan. And the whistle before the play. You know, Mark, you talk about those quarterbacks at BC. They're known for that. The other thing they're known for in the past, huge offensive lineman mm -hmm. probably the biggest offensive line you'll ever play against and interesting that Jeff Jagadzinski comes in and has those guys all lose weight across the board I mean for years that was the identity of Boston College the yeah. biggest offensive line in the country yeah. year after year said that he wanted them to lose some weight and didn't want his offensive linemen just leaning on people wanted them to be able to hit and to be able to run a little bit more proficiently this is Tashar Choice cutting it inside. Actually, Andre Callender, pardon me, brought down by Guyton on the play. And you know, it's different. We, we talk about 
Jeff Jagodzinski and the new head coach. It's different taking over a program where the expectations are so high. This was a 10 and 3 football team yep. last year under Tom O'Brien. They've been to, I think, eight straight bowl games, have won seven straight bowl games. You don't want to change too much. Yes. <laughs> the good thing is, and we talked about it before the game, is that in taking this job and knowing that Matt Ryan is a quarterback, the offense is in good hands, and good hands on the catch by John Lloyd, who had that key reception to set up the first score. Philip Wheeler making the stop with 13 seconds to go now in the first quarter play. Look at the former offensive coordinator of the Green Bay Packers, Jeff Jagosinski. And you know, they are really confident going against this song blitz. I mean, you can sense, sense that in their voice this week when we talked to them. They've seen a lot of zone blitz being around pro football now. Yeah, that's the end of the first period of play, and Ryan, under Jagosinski and offensive coordinator Steve Logan, has a lot more freedom to make checks and audible freestyle a little bit at the line of scrimmage, and it's working so far for Boston College. They lead 7 to nothing after the first 15 minutes. Back to Atlanta after this. Chase for the NASCAR Nextel Cup is on ABC tomorrow at 1 Eastern. Yeah, this head ball coach. Hey, I told you he could really go. Ending pasta bowl is going on. Oh, you didn't know? No, no, I had no idea. <laughs> Olive Garden's never ending pasta bowl with new smoked mozzarella Alfredo. Pick any sauce and pasta combination, then another. Just $8.95. Have all you want. Yesterday's history. Just a nice memory. I never think about yesterday. The only day that matters is today. Start today with Gillette Fusion Power and the confidence you get from the world's closest, most comfortable shave. Turn it on. Soothing micro pulses help you reduce friction. You'll barely feel the blades. Gillette Fusion Power. Be your best today. Gillette, the best the man can get. Comfortable in jeans out of tub. I'm comfortable in Wrangler. Wrangler five star premium denim jeans. Satisfaction guaranteed. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. Of all the numbers you encounter along your journey to wherever you're going, you'll find there's one number you can always count on for a great night's rest. Super 8, now with free high-speed internet, free breakfast, and more. Super 8, see you along the way. The first sport utility vehicle. The first full-time four-wheel drive. And now... Jeep introduces the industry's first lifetime powertrain warranty. It's the best warranty in the business, and no other car company matches it. So come and check out our largest lineup of Jeep vehicles ever with our exclusive lifetime warranty. Now, well-qualified buyers can get 0% financing for 72 months on Jeep Commander. Home. It's different things to different people. Whatever it means to you, you'll find it on our homepage, century21.com. Century 21, the gold standard. Under Harvest Moon here in Atlanta, Georgia. Boston College leading 7 0. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davey and Stacey Dales down in the field. The pivotal, albeit early game in the ACC for both Boston College and Georgia Tech. Here comes a little heat by the Tech defense. And Ryan throws it over the head of challenger Philip Wheeler once again coming on the blitz spot. Yeah, you see again Georgia Tech mark will always rush five guys you take a look at Philip Wheeler It's just figuring out which one of those linebackers or secondary guys will be the fifth rusher as we look at John Tanuda right there breathing a little bit easier right now momentum starting to come back a little bit to the Georgia Tech defense Tyler Evans back deep on the punt for Georgia Tech. Johnny Ayers standing at his own 28-yard line. Almost 43 a game. They came close. Fair catch back at the 22-yard line. As we go downstairs to Stacy. 
Hey, Mark, I had a chance to talk to linebacker for Boston College, Jalon Dunbar, and I said, what's one of the big differences for you guys this year under Coach Jagosinski? And he said, well, not only do we have a lot more fun this year, but he brought in a strength and conditioning coach named Jason Los Calzo. And I'll tell you what, he told me this guy worked us so hard in the offseason. I have never worked that hard in my life. There was more intensity. They did more agility drills. There was just a greater emphasis. And he said, I'm in the best shape I've ever been in. They really shaved some pounds, Bob and Mark. Yeah, good point. And uh, so far showing great fitness, albeit early in the game. Their team leading. Taylor Bennett with time on the slant and incomplete and a flag thrown now at the 43-yard line. Defending on the play, Roderick Rollins. It was intended for James Johnson. And Johnson, the only returning starter from a season ago for Georgia Tech offensively at the receiving position. He was the, uh, the other Johnson, not Calvin, of course. Pass interference against the defense, Boston College. Pass interference on the defense, number 20, 15 yards, previous spot, automatic first down. Bob, just to, as we take a look at the replay. Yeah, Mark, that's a, that's a clear call. Roderick Rollins, really the backup corner in the game. And I think, I think Boston College at corner opposite DeWan Tribble is really susceptible. I think Georgia Tech can exploit this Boston College secondary tonight. Taylor Bennett under the center. Shard Choice following his blockers patiently across the 40 to the 41 and a battle of the Commonwealth as we go back to Stan Verrett for the Sports Center in-game update. And D Mark, it's for the Governor's Trophy, Louisville and Kentucky. Kentucky's been waiting for this opportunity. They had the lead, but Brian Brown to Harry Douglas there to bring Louisville to within 19-14. All right, thanks a lot, Stan. And, uh, of course, Brian Brom is the only quarterback right now rated ahead of Matt Ryan on Matt Kuyper's big board. Taylor Bennett, Brian's counterpart on the field right now offensively. Choice over the left side of that offensive line out to the 43, picked up a pair. Mike Herzlick making the stop on the play. And, Bob, let's go back to the point that Stacy talked about. Jason Loscano, the strength and conditioning coach for Boston College those guys play a very important role they're almost like a another coach almost a, a psychologist guys kind of go in their lift and sit on the couch and kind of air their feelings out right you know what you're exactly right I mean and, and, and more and more in college football everywhere across the country they stay all summer and NCAA rules for big coaches to spend a lot of time with them so the weight coach and the weight staff spends the whole offseason in summer with these guys they're invaluable choice just got back to the line of scrimmage. Jalon Dunbar making the stop on the play, and there's a look at Lascano, who's done a great job in getting the fitness level of this Boston College team up a little bit. The seven linemen uh, losing combined 73 pounds since last season. And what's different about that to me? This is an old football team. I mean, Boston College, 24 seniors, the most in the country. We look at Big Brace right there. He lost about 10 biscuits, believe it or not. But they have 24 seniors, Mark, 17 already graduated. So these guys pretty set in their ways, won a lot of games. You can see what a great job he did convincing these guys that it was in their best interest to lose one. That was going to be my next question. How do you get, as a coach like Los Cano, get the players to buy into something like that after doing it one way for a long time? Well, I think it's something that helped him was the fact that Boston College became a zone blocking team up front. So they went away from their traditional gap blocking. So to play in this scheme now, you have to move a little bit better. You're going to get a chance on offense after this punt. And a great punt once again by Brooks. Challenger on the punt return, bravely taking it out to the 21-yard line. With 12.28 to go in the first half, Boston College on offense. A 56-yard punt. Back after this. Luann has a knife! Put the knife down. Luann, what are you doing? I'm having lunch from KFC. It's real food, which requires a fork and a knife. 
It's KFC, people. Have a real meal for lunch. Come to KFC for any of our new $2.99 deals. World-famous chicken, choice of a side, and a flaky biscuit. Grab lunch for just $2.99. KFC chicken now has the same great taste with zero grams of trans fat per serving. The sun burns at 11,000 degrees, especially when it's on your side of the cabin. But the Acura MDX monitors the sun and adjusts to keep you comfortable. If it knows where the sun is, imagine everything else it knows. Satellite-linked, fully automatic climate control. Only from Acura. Acura. Advance. See your Acura dealer for attractive lease rates on 2008 Acura models for well-qualified customers. Cuba, try this new comfort soft waistband. It's really comfortable. MJ. Michael, thanks for the underwear. Uh, I'm wearing your underwear. That you gave me to wear. The comfort soft waistband, tagless and wrapped in cotton, only from Hanes. Summer is winding down, and we want to wipe out our 2007 inventory during the end of summer sell-down. So you'll get incredible savings on every new Ford, like Ford F-150. Its payload and towing make it the big kahuna of pickups. Now get 0% APR for 60 months, plus 1,000 bonus cash on a new F-150 Super Crew. That means you can get over 8,800 in finance savings. Catch it while you can during the end of summer sell-down, only at your local Southern Ford dealer. You won't believe the new burgers at Checkers. Double Unbeliever Burgers. Three big, juicy double cheese burgers seasoned to perfection. The cheesy double bacon cheddar, the savory double mushroom Swiss, or the new double deluxe with double cheese and a one-of-a-kind tangy sauce. Choose any two Unbeliever Burgers for just three bucks. Only at Checkers, because you got to eat. You gotta oh, eat. yeah, baby. Stanford Red back in our ESPN2 studio, checking her primetime pulse. Nebraska's even things up with USC. Clody Glenn with a touchdown there. And Alabama leading Arkansas right now, 21-10 over on ESPN. Mark Jones and Bob Davey at BC and Georgia Tech. Got you. All right, thanks, Dan. And Ryan trying to squeeze it in there at the 37-yard line. Incomplete, it'll be second down and 10 from about the 21-yard line. Well defended for that play. Mark Jones, Bob Davey, Stacey Dales down the field. Bob. You talked about those four teams and then a big drop off in the big picture of college football. Uh, West Virginia doesn't fit in there. I kind of like what they've been doing recently. I don't see it just yet. I look at Florida, LSU, Oklahoma. I'm waiting until tonight's over to put USC in that okay. top four. I think there's a pretty significant gap, though, between those three that I mentioned and everybody else. This is Calendar. A nice run beyond the first down marker to the 36-yard line. Let me make another point. Florida. I mean, it may be time to start talking about Florida as the USC of the East. I mean, watching them today, the balance they have running and throwing, I mean, they are dominant right now. And they put 59 on Tennessee now. Easily on a Tennessee team uh, still trying to find its way. But uh, getting back to the Mountaineers, I think people are sleeping on West Virginia a little bit. I kind of like what Rich Rodriguez has done there, continues to build in a, in a place where circumstances can be kind of tough to have tangible success. A lot of wrestling down the sidelines, and that warrants a flag from the official at the 29-yard line. And that was Pat Clark defending on the play for Georgia Tech. Rich Gunnell, the intended receiver of Matt Ryan. It's going to be pass interference against Georgia Tech. Look, Pat Clark was a wide receiver, and I don't think there's any question about this call, and you see that so many times. I mean, Pat Clark was right in phase with Rich Gunnell, but he never looked back at all and tried to play the football. You think a receiver would have great skills yeah. to be able to do that with the ball in there. Yeah, watch the eyes, and Clark started five games a season ago. Moves the ball into Georgia Tech territory at the 49-yard line. Ryan, meanwhile, is thrown to seven different receivers today, really spreading things around. Callender in the backfield. It's a lead block and a flag thrown on the play. 
And now we're brought down to the 48-yard line by Avery Roberson. That's going to be holding against Boston College. Bob, we talked about the new zone blocking scheme of Boston College. How is that significantly different from what they did a season ago? Well, Mark, first of all, the simplest way to explain zone blocking is all the linemen working together, going to an area, not a specific man to block, and then the back doesn't have a predetermined hole. He can pretty much hit wherever the crease is. Where what Boston College used to do was block down on the front side, kick out, and give the back a predetermined hole. So zone blocking, I mean, just about every team in the country now is really zone blocking. First down and 10. We'll get back to the 41. A little heat coming once again. Ryan gets it away. It's complete. Forward progress of Kevin Challenger is going to be marked up at about the 44-yard line, but D.J. Jones was coming in on him. Picked up three on the play. Kevin Challenger overcoming a serious health issue over the winter time. Woke up one morning, told his roommate L.V. Whitworth to dial 911. He had a, a ruptured esophagus, something he got from acid reflux. It was a life-threatening condition, but after spending a month in bed, lost a little weight, got back to full strength, and has been pretty productive here tonight. This is his teammate on the other side of the field, receiver Rich Gunnell. Close to the first down as we go back to the studio in Stan Verrett. All right, time for Taco Bell studio update. Mark, Nebraska and USC. We told you about this touchdown a minute ago. Here's the pictures. Cody Glenn punching it in for the Huskers. And that gets the crowd excited in Lincoln. They're all tied up with the Trojans at seven apiece. Big upset today as well. Look at Utah and what they did to UCLA. Cal, no problem with Louisiana Tech so far in the third. Boy, what does that do to the Pac-10s? Uh, that power. really surprises me. I mean, a Utah team that's struggling puts 44 on a really good defensive football team, UCLA. That's going to be enough for the first down for Boston College, and Matt Ryan continues to be dialed in, a.k.a. Matty Ice, and he has been cool as that tonight. You know, we talked about Matt Ryan, but Boston College, new head coach, new offensive coordinator, Steve Logan, longtime head coach at East Carolina. Interesting, Steve Logan, the last three years, Mark, in the NFL Europe League, he told me that was like a fire zone festival in that league, so pretty educated on zone blitzes. And it gave Ryan enough time to throw, has a man, touchdown, what a catch on the play by Robinson. 38 yards for the score. And Pat Clark victimized again. Hey, where is Mel Kuyper? Let's move him up on that list because he stood in the pocket. He took a lick, but one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, Pat Clark, the former receiver. But Mark, that's great coverage. You cannot throw it any better. And I think they're going to review this right now. Remember, there must be indisputable video evidence with the call on the field to be overturned. But what a toss by Matt Ryan. And to appreciate it, you have to watch the protection, him standing in there. He's going to take a shot by Guyton, 58, right there. Sometimes it's the touchdown passes that you don't see, which can turn out to be the most impressive. Looks like he got both feet I in. I thought he did. He only needs, as you know, Mark, one foot in. Yep. Yep. I thought he had that ball secured. The first thing to make contact, I don't think you can overturn that call. Now, the only argument Georgia Tech would have is was, would be that his knee made contact out of bounds first. No, that's a touchdown. Yeah, that right foot that's was down on the turf as he had the ball secured. How about Brandon Robinson? Well, he had three drop passes last week, and uh, so far he's got to be feeling good about the way he's atoned for that. This week against Georgia Tech, if this stands, it'll give Boston College a 13-0 lead. Let me tell you, Matt Ryan has made two throws tonight that this is a pro sports town right here in Atlanta, and these NFL teams, there's no one can do it any better, Mark, than those two throws he's made. He might be the best quarterback in this city right now. 13 for 17, 233 yards. Touchdown. The touchdown will stand. 
And Boston College leads 13 to nothing. And these Georgia Tech corners, as we look at Pat Clark, under siege, not only missing tackles, but having a tough time right now. Well, Matt Ryan passed for 408 yards against Wake Forest in the season opener with five touchdown passes. If he keeps up on this pace, he's going to surpass that. Panovich with the extra point good. And Matt Ryan stood in there under duress and got it off in time to Brandon Robinson, making last week's three drops just a very distant memory. 14 0, and when he come back to Atlanta. The sun burns at 11,000 degrees, especially when it's on your side of the cabin. But the Acura MDX monitors the sun and adjusts to keep you comfortable. If it knows where the sun is, imagine everything else it knows. Satellite-linked, fully automatic climate control. Only from Acura. Acura. Advance. See your Acura dealer for attractive lease rates on 2008 Acura models for well-qualified customers. Women seem to be coming on to me in an unusual manner. You're that, Charlie? You have sex with someone and then they find their true love. You got the ticket to the big show. Oh! But on Friday, <laughs> the only one he wants is the one. Now? Where do I get the he can't touch? If you sleep with her, you'll lose her forever. I gotta go. Dane Cook, Jessica Alba. Your phone received pictures. Good luck, Chuck. Rated R in theaters everywhere Friday. Looks like a giant ball of cables. It's getting bigger! It's getting bigger! Ned, what does it all mean? It means we got an IBM Blade Center. The smartest way to optimize our IT. Easier to deploy, more flexible. We don't need all those cables anymore. The IBM Blade Center and Quad Core Intel Xeon Processor. Give it to me, give it to me, one, two, three. Introducing Applebee's new Ultimate Trios. Great taste, great big portions, and a great price. Choose three from seven delicious options to create the ultimate platter at an unbeatable price. New Ultimate Trios, only at Applebee's. Of all the numbers you encounter, along your journey to wherever you're going, you'll find there's one number you can always count on for a great night's rest. Super 8, now with free high-speed internet, free breakfast, and more. Super 8, see you along the way. Primetime, brought to you by Acura, Acura, Advance, and Aflac. Ask about it at work. Look at Tech Tower, the oldest structure on campus. The Tech, on the side spawn, the tradition of, of course, stealing the tea, a little delinquent, of course. First done in 1969. The last time the tea was stolen was 2001. And you know what? The way that Boston College is going right now, Bob, they might just take that tea home. They may take the whole Tech thing. This is Dwyer on the kickoff return. Has a seam up the sideline, and Dwyer with a good burst out to midfield and a late flag thrown down on the field at the 46-yard line after the 39-yard return by Jonathan Dwyer trying to light a spark under his teammates. Well, there's a reason this guy wears number 21. <laughs> you better have some confidence because the guy that wore it before you was pretty darn good. They're going to bring it back a little bit, Bob. It looks like a block in the back against Georgia Tech. Illegal block in the back. Number 47 of the return team. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Perplexed-looking Chan Gailey on the sidelines. Well, I think why is, we'll take a look at this replay, but I think it was clear on the other side of the field, Jake Lockwood, number 47, but this young freshman running back, Jonathan Dwyer, number 21, about 225 pounds, 138 yards and three touchdowns last week against Sanford. And now Dwyer split out as a receiver on first down and 10. There are Bennett working out of the shotgun. It's a double reverse. And there's the freshman Dwyer, but there are a host of tacklers waiting for him, and he put it on the ground. A fumble. It looks like Georgia Tech was able to recover the loose ball. Jonathan Dwyer, the first one there. And a frightening moment for Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech coming in this game uh, hadn't turned the ball over all season. 
Yeah, Mark, you're right. And that's a new wrinkle. They ran that reverse last week against Samford for a touchdown. But Austin Giles, number 52, gets great penetration right there. And his brother, Zach Giles, played for me at Notre Dame. But a great strip right there by Taji Morris. Pushes the ball back three yards. Second down and 13. Peak in motion. Bennett with time. Incomplete at the 47 yard line. And man, did Johnson take a hit as we go back to Stan in the studio. All right, guys, Louisville and Kentucky, the Cats have been waiting for their turn. They've lost their last four against the Cardinals. And Anthony Allen is putting Louisville on top in this one. It's 21 19 now after his touchdown run. Number nine team in the country trying to get it done in their home state. I guess depending on Stan, whether Louisville puts up the requisite stats or Brom, more importantly, puts up the requisite stats. So you might want to slip uh, our guy here tonight, Matt Ryan, ahead of him on the big board. But uh, look at the couple of players shaking up on the field. West Davis, number 45 for Boston College, and James Johnson, number 89 for Georgia Tech. Big collision on the sidelines here on the incompletion. Bennett put it right in there, and well-thrown ball, I thought. And tipped by Taji Morris. Look, it looked like Wes Davis really in pretty good shape, kept his head up, didn't drop his head down, but obviously such a frightening injury right now based on what happened uh, with Kevin Everett, I believe, of right. the Buffalo Bills. And right over there in front of Boston College's bench. <laughs> Players uh, shaking up on the play, and Mark, I believe James Johnson also down. Yeah, Johnson, uh, one of the only returning starters at the wide receiver spot for Georgia Tech this year in a season where they try and fill the huge void left by Calvin Johnson, who's off to the NFL. Let's look at James up under his own power. James Johnson missed the Sanford game last week, coming back from a knee injury. Actually. Hurt the knee against Notre Dame a couple of weeks ago in their 33-3 win and uh, had an arthroscopic procedure done the following day, the Monday. And good in him that uh, for good for him to come back in such a short period of time. You know, Mark, really, as I mentioned, you know, I've been around a lot of injuries. He was in a pretty good football position right there with his head up. And normally when you see that, you don't see a severe injury. Bob, of course, when we see situations like this, most recently we think of what happened to Kevin Everett of the Buffalo Bills. And Bob, coaches talk about being in a, as you said a few moments ago, good football position. Most importantly, the head up, correct? No question, Mark, because that keeps your neck from hyperextending under. And that's great news right there to see Wes Davis up on his feet. Wes Davis, the backup strong safety. Again, not a lot of depth, in my opinion, in this Boston College secondary. And, you know, you talk about this Boston College defense. They're minus three really good players. B.J. Raji, their defensive lineman, finds out the morning of the Wake Forest game that he's out for the year academically. Their linebacker, Brian Toll, out with labrum surgery, I believe, for the year. Then their defensive end, Nick Larkin, as we look at Frank Spaziani, yeah, one of the top defensive coordinators in the country. He has a pretty good game plan going so far tonight for that defense. Taylor Pennant puts his man at the 44-yard line. His tight end, Pete, and gang tackle stopped up at the 32-yard line. And Frank Spaziani, through the years, has done a great job at Boston College. Last week, his team produced seven turnovers against North Carolina State. And... Jeff Jagosinski, the head coach for Boston College, said one of the major assets, one of the biggest pluses of him taking the job was in the fact that Spaziani decided to stay. Man, that's huge. I mean, that is huge. I mean, the continuity on defense. And you know what? There are two really good defensive coordinators in this game, and their schemes are somewhat similar, John Tenuta and Frank Spaziani. Challenger and triple back to the punt. Goes through the arms and loose. It was probably touched, looked like it was, but Boston College recovering the loose ball. Recovered it their own 
18-yard line into the front wing moment for the Eagles. Still no official signal as both players wrestle for it. Still no official signal. Boston College comes up with it. As I mentioned earlier, fighting for every inch. Possession crucial. And Brendan Deska, number 95, crucial right there. Fumble recovery. Good hustle on the play. Boston College will take over first and 10 inside its own 20 when we return. Turbocharged Acura RDX with super handling all wheel drive. The perfect balance of exhilaration and control. Rain isn't a problem, it's an inspiration. Acura, advance. Take advantage of attractive lease rates on the 2008 Acura RDX for well qualified customers. Single again. Will I still look eligible with gray hair? Is that all people will see? How do you make a clean break? Just for Men stops Gray from hiding who you are. Easy, with five-minute target Gray technology. Dating again is easier than I thought. And you wonder, why did I ever put up with gray hair? Let the real you come through. Stay in the game with Just for Men. with melty cheese. Taco Bell's new cheesy beefy melt to get seasoned beef, cool sour cream, melty, melty, and even more glorious melty cheese. Think outside the bun. What a nightmare. Without silent armor tires, getting home could be a real pain. That's why I have a Campbell Blend pilot to avoid all that stuff. Not the main reason, but definitely the top 10. Goodyear Silent Armor Technology, featuring a layer made with Kevlar, a material that's pound for pound five times stronger than steel for toughness, and a comfort zone for a smooth, quiet ride. What else is in the top ten? The gift shop. Innovative thinking up here, so you can get there. Goodyear, get there. Autumn in New England, tranquil, delightful, deafening. Pedal to the metal loud in Loudon. Volume on full and Fenway. Firepower in the foliage as NASCAR comes to New Hampshire. Then the game's best rivalry, the pennant race, Sunday night baseball. Forget the pretty leaves. Remember the date, Sunday on ABC and ESPN. Sunday night baseball, Yankees and Red Sox. The Red Sox winning today. The rubber match tomorrow in Fenway. And uh, wonder what happened in Manny's world today. Ryan on the play fake. And downfield incomplete at the 42 yard line for Gunnell as we go downstairs to Stacy. Well, Mark, we saw that last BC touchdown by Brandon Robinson. The bad news for Georgia Tech right now is that their best cover corner, as defensive coordinator John Tenuta told us, is out right now with illness. Team officials say he may or may not return in this football game. The secondary will continue to be tested now for Georgia Tech. And on the other side, guys, Wes Davis for Boston College is answering questions. Potential concussion, but I will have more as the game goes on, guys. All right, Stacy. A game of attrition in the secondary for Georgia Tech. This is Whitworth. A late flag thrown. Whitworth brought down at the 31 yard line by Pat Clark. Clark the good in run support, but uh, this one's going to come back. That's going to be a hold against Boston College. Yeah, Mark, it was on the tight end. At the end of the line of scrimmage right here. And you know, Stacy talks about the injuries at corner. What makes that so big tonight is Georgia Tech not getting great pressure on Matt Ryan, so there's nowhere to hide. Holding on the offense, number 80, half the distance of the goal, second down. That's against the tight end, Ryan Purvis, who had a hold of Shane Bowen, the linebacker. Yeah, you're going to look right here in motion. He's going to come across and hold right here on Shane Bowen. Yeah, got to call it. I tell you, that's a huge. Yeah. 
Sets up a second down and 20. Billy Flutie in the game up here, Mark. That's a familiar name. A few of Doug. The pass complete. This is Megwa. And Megwa across the 20. And uh, every time you mention Flutie in New England or in the Boston area, as it relates to Boston College, he works with us now. But what about his defining moment? It had to have been this one. The Orange Bowl against the University of Miami. Time winding down, and Flutie heaves it. And on the other end, Gerard Phelan for the touchdown. No doubt in South Florida. That one still stinks. I can tell you from personal experience being a resident. Blitz coming. Ryan gets rid of it in time. And a first down reception to the 38-yard line. Another tackle missed as Kevin Challenger made the catch, and Pat Clark couldn't wrap him up right away. It's a first down Boston College after the 18-yard pickup by Challenger. It all starts with protection. Watch the safety number one come right there. A great block by Andre Challenger. Again, Mark, the corners under siege. Missed tackle by Pat Clark. Boy, was I'll tell ever. you something now. Back to Stacy's report. That is a key, key problem right now. These corners of Georgia Tech because they're picking up the pressure right now. And Matt Ryan is in a groove. With time again down the middle of the field. Incomplete. That one broken up nicely by Philip Wheeler. It was intended for Ryan Purvis. Philip Wheeler, the All-American candidate, a 6'2 senior. Quite different linebacking positions earlier in his career. And John Tanuta known for moving a lot of his linebackers around from the weak side, strong side. Wheeler playing middle now. Yeah, and this Wheeler, that's a tremendous job of concentrating on that football by Philip Wheeler and getting that ball out of there. Philip Wheeler may be the best defensive player in the ACC, Mark. I love this kid. He's a great football player. His roommate, Tashar Choice, says he's like a ghost. You never see him at the apartment. Oh. Flag down on the play. They're going to whistle this one before the snap. I know it didn't count, <laughs> but the revolutions on that throw by Matt Ryan, does he throw a yeah. beautiful ball? That thing was a rope. Darrell Robertson perhaps moving a little bit early on that defensive front. Right of the snap, offside, defense, in the neutral zone, five yards. Mark, not to get too excited about a play that didn't count, but watch this throw right here by Matt Ryan. I mean, that is pretty now. Well, his coach doesn't mind if he tries to force one in there once in a while, and with that kind of arm strength, Bob, why not? Worth the risk. <laughs> 15 to 21, 263 yards. I, I, a touchdown. Know, I guess you're right. <laughs> I mean, I'd let him go. Coach made a big point about what did he call it? Go ahead and BB through a keyhole. A BB through a keyhole. Now, with that said, I have seen Matt Ryan try to force some in and it's come back to bite him. But right now, tonight, keep letting it rip because you are on fire. Challenger the deep back out of the eye. On second down and five. He gets the call, got a nice lead block on the play. And it's brought down about a yard shy of the first down in the 49-yard line. You know, we talked about Matt Ryan as a freshman, Bob, how he earned the respect of his teammates at that big pep rally on campus before the Notre Dame game. They nominated him to go up and shoot the important free throws in that contest. Well, one of the defining moments I remember in his career, two, two years ago against Clemson, he took a bone-jarring hit, had his helmet come off, it was so hard. Put that hat back on, got back in the huddle, and let his team down the field. Captain of the football, basketball, and baseball teams in high school. Going to try and run it on the edge, but nothing doing. Good speed and pursuit by Darrell Robertson, who was the first one to get there for 10. I don't like the call, Mark. You know, and I know it's easy to say when it didn't work, but when you run east and west against this defense, there's a lot of speed on that field. Philip Wheeler from the inside out right there just swarmed them. Calendar with nowhere to go that time. And it's fourth down. Also, Daryl Robertson from defensive end position. Nice play by the entire defense. 
Here's plenty from his own 31. Low snap. Nobody was coming. Tyler Evans back deep. Came out of the pack after taking the initial blow. Made his way out to the 24-yard line for Georgia Tech. With 5.21 to go in the first half. Tashard Choice, a man of many different talents besides running the football, like his summer gig as an umpire. Listen up. I'm a little league umpire, so when I'm out there doing the baseball games, I have my own little style. So when, say, for instance, it's one strike and the kid swings and he misses for the second strike, I have my own little call. Go a little something like this. Yes, he did. And so the kid has two strikes, and the last strike is strike three. So ball comes down, home plate, I have my own little style. You may like it. A little something like this. <laughs> that is the greatest punch out and strike two call I've ever seen. An interesting guy. I mean, I love him. Went to Oklahoma out of high school from here in Atlanta. Played with Adrian Peterson. After a year and a half at Oklahoma, transferred back to Georgia Tech. An interesting mark we talked about. Didn't have to sit out a year after he transferred. Yeah, very uh, good on the NCAA's part to take a lot of trying circumstances into account in his case. Bennett fires a strike complete to Thomas and getting back to Choice. You know, Choice's mother was not able to attend a lot of the games in Oklahoma because of various family health issues and crises. So, hey, the NCAA has been criticized for being discompassionate, uncompassionate at times. This time they're very understanding. Let him play right away. and. Uh, his mother in attendance along with various other family members tonight here in Atlanta, but the numbers not adding up so far for choice. And think about nine straight games, Mark, over 100 yards. So just how alarming that statistic really is tonight. Third down, four to go. The pass troubled and incomplete. At the 41 yard line, Greg Smith could not hang on to it. Ron Triple got his arm and they may have tipped it a little bit. Mark again. I think that was an incomplete pass, obviously, but why do you keep attacking the one triple number 27? I mean, I think there's a pretty big drop off between these BC corners. I mean, the crowd thinks it was a completion now. Are they trying to take advantage of his aggressiveness? Is that it, Bob? Yeah, but they're throwing the ball in front of him, Mark. I think that's an incomplete pass. Yeah. That ball bounced off the turf. It was a little closer, though, than the first look. The thing I would do with Tribble, because he's so aggressive at corner, run that little route you just ran, and then make a double move, Mark, and take advantage of his aggressiveness. But if you throw the football in front of him, he's going to make an interception now. Let's see if uh, coordinator Bond has that in his arsenal tonight. He is so aggressive at corner. You can take advantage of that over-aggressiveness at times. He had three interceptions last week. Actually, two weeks ago, Triple did. There he is right there against Wake Forest. National Defensive Player of the Week and uh, able to apparently break this one up. Yeah, Mark, that ball hit the ground. But again, let's look at Triple. You can't stop it off. Is it great? Look at him looking back at the quarterback right there. So if there's some kind of a double move, they're going to run by Triple. Triple has been impressive, though. No question. Yeah. Didn't get the double move on that one, but it's interesting how his coach is telling us that Triple is practicing like a pro, and you see that happen so many times in the case of seniors. <laughs> Contract year, <baby. laughs> Contract year. Hey, if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. But I thought that ball hit the ground. I, I don't think there's enough evidence right there to overturn that ball. Juan Triple, like his teammate Matt Ryan on the other side of the ball, projected to be a first rounder. Fourth down coming up for Georgia Tech. And Brooks comes in to punt. So Triple goes back for the punt return. I'll tell you what, I mean, things are going bad right now for Georgia Tech, but one thing, this Durant Brooks, he kills the football this punt. Helping them out tonight in the field position department. Came into this game averaging 47 a punt. He's averaging just around there right now. And air mails another one. This one's going to be marked out of bounds. 
at about the 34-yard line and down to Stacy for an update on Wes Davis, who was shaken up. Yeah, Mark, we saw that big collision, and I uh, just got word from head athletic trainer for Boston College, Steve Bushy, who basically told us we do not give injury information. We have evaluated him for a head injury, guys, but looking at him, he looks very dazed, a little lethargic on the sideline, and it's guys really uncertain whether or not he will return in this football game. All right, Stacy Davis, the backup strong safety, playing in concert at times with Jamie Silva. First down and 10 for Matt Ryan in that offense. That's Callender, pardon me, Whitworth. Gains a couple of yards, a late flag thrown on the play. Well, Matt Ryan has really turned the beat around after last week where he was just 15 of 34 against North Carolina State. And it was a very emotional game, Bob, for Boston College. Four. Make no mistake, playing against their former head coach, Tom O'Brien, who came into Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, with his new team, North Carolina State. Holding on the offense, number 65, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. Look, that's why this game is so big to Boston College. I mean, their first two games against Wake Forest, NC State at home, tough ACC games. Tonight, their third straight ACC game. Interesting, they have three non conference games Army, UMass, and I believe Bowling Green. They get this one. They could be six and zero heading to South Bend. Now. Ryan out of shotgun, oh. behind his receiver, but still caught by Brandon Robinson. His fifth catch. I'm gonna tell you what. Five yards on the play. Get the name and manufacturer that jux machine. <laughs> I mean, these receivers right now are on fire. Mark. That was a great catch by Brandon Robinson. Robinson, challenger, challenger, atoning for their drops a week ago. Was kind of behind Robinson. Wasn't no question. It? No question. It's a heck of a catch. Whitworth in the ball game beside Ryan. Second down, 15 to go. Under a little bit of heat. Shocking there wasn't a hold called on that play. Oh, they got it, man. Oh, it's a flag. <laughs> The right. You saw it. Deal with Ramsey 73. <laughs> I mean, that was as obvious as it gets. Michael Johnson was being held by Ramsey. Holding on the offense. Number 73. Penalties hey, Mark, If you're going to hold him, get your money's worth. Watch Cliff Ramsey right here. I mean, if you don't get called, then go ahead and do it right. Right there. That's Michael Johnson's a weapon for Georgia Tech. He's about six foot seven and can run now. He's been wreaking havoc against those tackles. Costanzo and Charles. Third and 15 coming up after the infraction. Johnson uh, slowed by preseason hernia surgery last year. He took it slow in his comeback this year. He's played well. Little draw. Whitworth. About six yards, Burnett made the stop on the play. It's fourth down coming up for Boston College. Mark, let me make this point. I think Georgia Tech can block a punt for BC. Their deep snapper, 51, Jack Kaiser. I'm talking about Boston College. He's a little slow on that snap. I think Georgia Tech can get one if they come after BC. Look at Kaiser and Ayers. Had a low snap that he had to deal with on one punt already tonight. Well, it didn't seem like Georgia Tech was sending anybody on that occasion. 3.19 to go in the first half here. Georgia Tech trailing 14 to nothing. And uh, for Boston College, a win tonight would really validate their early season success and give them somewhat of a leg up in the ACC's Atlantic Division. You know, you talk about Boston College. I remember several years ago when they came to the ACC, a lot of people were skeptical. You know, was BC fast enough? Did they have enough athletes to compete in the ACC? You know, since they've been in a mark of 12 and 6, that's the best record in the Atlantic comparable. Since they've joined, they have the best record in the Atlantic conference. Interesting stat. Johnny Ayers with the punt. Oh. Came up the middle with some pressure. Evans watches it bounce, and it's going to bounce all the way down to the 23-yard line. 
as we go back to Stan Frick. Stan, what's uh, coming up at halftime for us? Well, funny you should ask, Mark, because we've got the whole rundown. The Trojans in trouble in Lincoln, Nebraska, having all they want from the Cornhuskers. The Vols got swamped today by Florida, and absolutely no fight from the Irish again on offense, Jesse. I'll tell you what, Notre Dame right now can't get anything going, can't protect the quarterback, can't run the football. A world of hurt if you're an Irish fan right now. It's three weeks and counting we've seen on this offense. That and lots more coming up with the half, Mark. All right, Stan. First down and 10 for Georgia Tech. And it underneath to choice on the little screen. This is a team that has screens well traditionally. Out to the 33, close to a first down. Under the lights here at Grant Field, Bobby Dodge Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Number 21, Boston College against number 15, Georgia Tech. A couple of 2 0 teams doing battle tonight. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davies. Stacey Dales down in the field. This is the first ever hookup between these two teams as members of the ACC. Georgia Tech with the lead in the all-time series, but these teams haven't met since 1998. It's been a long time between drinks of water. Boy, a flag thrown on the near side of the field. Looks like an illegal substitution on the play. Illegal substitution on the offense. Five yards, first down. You know, Mark, Georgia Tech came into this game, and stats early in the year are so skewed, but they're the fourth team in the nation rush offense. BC is the fourth team in the nation rush defense. It looks to me that Boston College can stop the run of Georgia Tech. I think Georgia Tech is going to have to throw the football. And we're going to find out now how good Taylor Bennett really is because I think they have to throw the football to win this game tonight. And Taylor Bennett with a lot of responsibility this year. No Calvin Johnson. No Reggie Ball. And a play fake. Under some heat and unable to escape. Sacked back at the 21 yard line by Rob Brace. Hey, off season program. Big Ron Brace from 350 down to 320. Mark, he's become somewhat of a playmaker. Used to be a guy that was just a big old two gap guy in there. Watch him. But, Bob, isn't that kind of like. You know, 350 to 3 That's like taking two dollars out of Bill right. Gates's pocket. I'm gonna man. tell you what, man. This guy looks good. Man. He can move. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it didn't make a big dent, but it made enough of a dent. He got a sack on the quarterback. Great mobility and a nice play by Brace. Second and 23 as a result up top, and it completed the 40-yard line. Still trying to go Dewan Tribble's way. It was intended for Greg Smith, third and long, coming up for Taylor Bennett. Bennett, an international affairs major, speaks fluent Spanish and Russian in any language. This was incomplete. Mark, the thing BC does a great job. They put Tribble to the wide side of the field. In other words, they're going to put Taji Morris into the boundary, so they put their best cover guy to the field because as an offense, you want to take advantage of all that grass and throw it to the wide side, but they have their best cover guy out there. I kind of got the feeling that the way that BC defense is playing that they might have been reading up a lot on the hype of this offense of Georgia Tech. Bennett sets up the screen once again to choice. And choice with a little bit of room but short of the first down at the 37 yard line. So an impotent anemic looking offense so far by Georgia Tech unable to score with 123 to go here in the first half of play. Really a good timeout right there by Boston College. Still have two timeouts remaining. To try and get something out of this remaining time on the clock after they get the ball back. Time now for our uh, Who Am I alumni question. Kind of a game show. <laughs> Question is, I graduated from Georgia Tech in 1922 as an amateur. I won 13 major golf championships, 20 attempts. I'm still the only person who have accomplished winning golf's Grand Slam. Who am I? Are you a golfer? I, I hit it hard. I don't hit it straight. I bet you golf just for the wardrobe. Man. <laughs> you like the little outfit. The I look pretty good. I know I'll you do. Good. I know you do. <laughs> you wear that tight stuff Tiger so, wears, so, right? Well, I got, I got the red shirt like he does. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Punt high, fair catch called by Tribble. This is going to take a Georgia Tech bounce all the way down 
to the five yard line and so far one of the prevailing storylines of the game has been you'd have to say Bob Davey one the passing proficiency of quarterback Matt Ryan of Boston College and uh, the inability of Tashar Choice and the Georgia Tech offense to pile up those staggering rushing numbers they had in the first two weeks of the season. I agree, and now Georgia Tech finds himself down 14 nothing. but I really wanted to see Matt Ryan, a true dropback quarterback, against this Georgia Tech zone blitz. And right now, not only is he doing a great job of picking on the Georgia Tech corners, they're doing a really good job of pass protection, Mark. Running the ball here on first and 10. Nice cutback on the play. Andre Callender and a look at the pass chart numbers by Matt Ryan. I think the thing that jumps out at you is throwing the ball to the outside. You know, throwing the ball to the outside, really picking on those corners of Georgia Tech. And Georgia Tech struggled not only pass coverage, they've also missed some tackles. Gotta love the toughness of uh, Matt Ryan, which I documented a little bit earlier, talking about that massive hit that he took against Clemson a couple of years ago. We still haven't talked about the fact that last year, from about the third week of the season, he played with a severely injured ankle, a high ankle sprain, not to mention later in the year, in October, played the rest of the season with a broken bone in his foot. Yeah. And never was it in question that he would play, at least to him. We were receiving reports, actually I did a couple of times when I called a couple of Boston College games that he was questionable, but uh, I think there really was no question. Well, you know how hard it is to play with a bad foot. You've seen me all season. <laughs> we haven't been able to jog together yet because I'm suffering from a bit of a we got, foot injury. we got to get you cranked up and right. Uh, it's too early to be only 80%. Here's Challenger once again trying the left side out of bounds at the 20 yard line. And he got the first down for Boston College, picking up eight on the play. Now Boston College kind of balancing things off a little bit, running the ball. From what I've seen in the first half of this game, this is the best team in the ACC right now, Boston College. I mean, the ACC has struggled early in this football team. I think Clemson and Boston College right now, it's early to me. I'm going out on a limb with those two teams based on this first half performance. Florida State struggling, as is the University of Miami. Door wide open for opportunity for both these teams on the field tonight. Calendar again running the other way. And brought down by Daryl Richard. And Ryan uh, following in the lineage at Boston College. Uncle John Lockery, also a former quarterback at the school from 79 to 82. And Coach Jagosinski giving Boston College a bit of a personality transplant. Albeit the previous administration had things going pretty well. This one working well, too, as we go uh, downstairs to Stacy with Coach Jags. Coach Jags, how have you guys managed to contain this Georgia Tech rush? Uh, we're doing a good job. Uh, we're switching up our protections a little bit. And uh, I tell you what's hurting us is our holding penalties. we got to stop doing that. I mean, we're sitting there at first and 20. That kills you. Can't win first down. You told us a big key would be to pick up the zone blitz offensively. How have you guys done? We've done a pretty decent job of it so far, but I'm sure that he'll keep dialing them up. And uh, we got to just keep executing. All right. Thank thanks, you. Coach. Mark. All right. Thanks a lot, Stacy. Boston College leading by a couple of touchdowns under the lights here in Atlanta. We're going to go back to Jesse Palmer and Stan Brett in the studio. Stan, T.I. and Ludacris are here tonight, but they haven't had anything to rap about. What are you going to rap about? Well, we're talking football, but A-Town is definitely in the house. <laughs> it's Georgia Tech and B.C. at the half, and you started the game off by talking about Tashar Choice, but now at the half, we're talking about Matt Ryan. Yeah, Matt Ryan stole the show, really. He played great two weeks ago against Wake Forest, struggled a little bit against NC State last week, but the guy is on fire tonight. 268 yards passing and a touchdown. The guy has been unstoppable, putting the ball on the money. He's throwing the football just about as good as I've seen anybody throw it this year deep, especially in the face of pressure. You see this throw, it's only where the receiver Robinson can catch it. He's showing you why he is such an NFL prospect right now. We talk about Brian Brom, we talk about Andre Woodson in Kentucky, but Matt Ryan, I think you definitely have to somehow class in that group of three guys. Preseason pick for player of the year in the Big East, uh, in the ACC rather, Matt Ryan trying to get his team to 3-0 in conference play.
USC trying to make a statement, taking on Nebraska tonight, number one team in the country. We've only seen them against Idaho so far. Pete Carroll celebrating his 56th birthday, and John David Booty celebrating a touchdown to Stanley Havili. Trojans up 7 0. But here comes Nebraska, Cody Glenn barreling in, and it's tied at 7. Still second quarter now. Third and eight for Nebraska. Sam Keller under pressure finds Nate Swift for the 19 yard reception. That would lead to a field goal. Nebraska up 10 7. They've got all those great running backs, but it's the fullback getting the job done. For the, what, whether they're the spreading throw. them out and throwing the guy slants, that shouldn't happen. But Avili right now is having a big game for this offense using the fullback in that USC attack. But the Trojans certainly in a battle. It's 14 10 right now. The other team from Southern California in the Pac-10, UCLA, goes down hard. Utah came into this game 0-2. They hadn't scored much all season. They were, they were without their starting quarterback, the starting running back, and how do you explain this, Jeff? Well, I'll tell you what, Tommy Grady making only a second start. You see right there, 246 yards, four touchdowns against the 11th-ranked UCLA Bruins. What a statement game for Utah. Carl defense really struggling in this Lots more to come here at the half. Some SEC showdowns to talk about. Tennessee and Florida, Arkansas and Alabama. A couple of non-conference games that were pretty interesting as well. Have a real meal for lunch. Come to KFC for any of our new $2.99 deals. World-famous chicken, choice of a side, and a flaky biscuit. A real deal for lunch for just $2.99 at KFC. It's time to feel free with Chase Freedom. Feel free to choose points for rewards like travel. I'm free to do what I want. Or feel free to choose cash back. I'm free. Then feel free to change back again. In the old town. Without losing a thing. That's freedom. Free. That's Chase Freedom. Get it free at chase.com slash freedom. HD? HD. Thoughts? Lots of thoughts. LCD, plasma. Keep us around sound, head spinning. <laughs> Deep breath. Likes? Cowboy explosions, touchdown robots. Cooking, tearjerkers, crime dramas. Sing along musicals. This system. Hi. Nice. Mechanically inclined? Emergency room inclined. We install. High five. We pledge a complete home theater experience. And now get no interest financing for three years on home theaters $9.99 and up. That's HD done right. At Best Buy. It's different things to different people. Whatever it means to you, you'll find it on our homepage, century21.com. Century 21, the gold standard. Home Auto Mall's domestic and import pre-owned superstores know that while men say one thing... I want a pre-owned vehicle that looks and drives like new. Women hear quite another. He wants a quality pre-owned from the Palm Superstores. He says... I want to choose from the largest selection of pre-owns around. What she heard was... He wants to choose from over 400 gold check certified pre-owns from the Palm Superstores for thousands less. At the Palm Superstores, we get what he says. Perfection. And we know what she heard. Perfect low price. Both get what they want at the Palm Superstores. Great first half, and Boston College is trying to get to 3 0 in the ACC, leading Georgia Tech in Atlanta 14 0. Big showdown in the SEC East. It's Tennessee and Florida. Tim Tebow, first big test for him, Jesse. Yeah, this was his first chance to play a tough opponent in the SEC as the starting quarterback. He fared out pretty well. Got some help from his special teams early to give him the lead. Brandon James had an ankle injury, wasn't sure if he was going to play, but this was a big kickstart for the game. Yeah, you see the speed right here. He set up some scores last week versus Troy. He gets Florida on the on the ball early with his speed you saw right there. Tennessee down 28-20 in the third. Arian Foster coughs it up. Tennessee had some momentum. They had scored on the touchdown. Uh, a pick of Tebow in for a touchdown, but they gave it right back, and the Gators going to win it 59-20. Pretty impressive win for Florida today. Arkansas and Alabama, first big test 
for Nick Saban. I'll do respect for Vanderbilt last week, but <laughs> Arkansas is number 16 in the country. Casey Dick back to pass. Tipped by Wallace Gilberry. Darren Mustin comes up with it, and the tight defense setting up the offense just the way Nick Saban draws it up. Absolutely. His defense has played very well in these first three games. I'll tell you who started this game real well. Nice, too. John Parker Wilson there in the tough back shoulder throw to his favorite receiver, DJ Hall. They got off to a quick start in this game for Alabama. And then Wilson going up top again. It's Hall again. The tight rolling 21 0, but wait a minute. Here comes Darren McFadden, the Heisman candidate. In for the touchdown, already a 100-yard day for McFadden. And then just a few minutes later, Jarrell Norton with the interception. And Arkansas in business down 31-24. Still plenty of time left for the Hogs as they try to come back at Alabama. Mississippi State and Auburn, fourth quarter. Mississippi State down 14-13. It's Christian Ducree up the middle for the touchdown. Of course, Auburn coming off that loss to South Florida. Did, did you think that this kind of held over this week? Yeah, absolutely. Auburn, to me, looked real physically beat up. They looked tired, and it showed in this football game against Mississippi State. That was their last chance, and Sylvester Croom gets the win 19-14 over Auburn. Louisville and Kentucky, Andre Woodson, top NFL prospect, along with Brian Brom. Raphael Little up the middle for the touchdown. Wildcats missed the extra point, but they're up 19-7. They're getting fired up in Lexington after dropping four straight to the Cardinals the last Four meters with Brian Brom to Harry Douglas. It's 19-14. Then Louisville first and goal from the 10. Brian Brom to Anthony Allen. Delayed handoff and Allen does the rest. Louisville up 21-19. Back and forth they go. Here's Woodson again. Play action look. What do you think of him? I'll tell you what, I think he moves well. He's got great vision. You can see why he's such a big pro prospect as well as Brian Brom, two of the best in this football game. That was to John Connor, made it 26-21. Ensuing kickoff, Louisville comes right back. Trent Guy, he's not just a guy. He's taking this one over. Look at the speed down the sideline in Louisville back on top now, 28-26 as they go back and forth in Lexington. We showed you number one, number two LSU having no problem, even without Matt Flynn. Ryan Perilou, a highly touted recruit from a couple of years ago, redshirt sophomore, pair of touchdowns in this one, 14 to 22 and 22 yards. Remember, Middle Tennessee put 42 in Louisville last week. And South Carolina, no problem with South Carolina State. First meeting between these two, even though they're less than an hour apart. Still to come, Michigan and Notre Dame. It's a battle to save each of their seasons. We'll show you what happened when the two freshman quarterbacks hooked up. in more places. That's what you can expect from the new AT&T. Hey, the largest digital voice and data network in America. So switch to the network you can trust. AT&T. Your world delivered. Do they send out those FTPs? Yeah. Us. Building ourselves up with just anything? That's wrong. Getting all the big taste you deserve for only 99 cents? That's right. Like the Junior Bacon Cheeseburger or our five-piece chicken nuggets for only 99 cents. Wendy's. That's right. Oh, Bonnie, about the... Oh, the email. Yeah, I got it. No, about... The stapler. I haven't seen it, but I would check in the mail. No, 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 no. About the conference. I've decided... That I'm going? That's great. Thank you, sir. I Actually, appreciate... Actually, Jill's going. I'm sorry, Bonnie. Well, it's just that... Jill is taller. No, she... Knows her way around Cleveland. No, she... You drive a stick? I can learn. Jill doesn't finish other people's... Sandwiches. I can't believe you told him. They chose you for a reason, and you chose Embassy Suites for a reason. Like our spacious two rooms. Embassy Suites Hotels. My brother calls me Murphy's Law. Oh! This Friday, <laughs> falling in love with her is easy. Cam's the one man. Not getting hurt could be a problem. I'm sorry. Good luck, Chuck. Rated R. In theaters Friday. My art history student, Emily, has taken advantage of opportunities to study in Spain, Egypt, and England. She's already won a prestigious fellowship for graduate study, and this year, she's curating an exhibit at Boston's Museum of Fine Arts. Nick is a star on the field and off, with a demanding double major in education and spending summers as a research assistant. He still makes time to bring a smile to children in Boston schools and hospitals. I'm Emily Newmeyer. I'm Nick Larkin, and we're students at Boston College. How's that feel? 
Great. Get ready for the game. Watch Sports Center Monday kick off with an original ice cold Miller Lite. Good call for Monday night. Autumn in New England. Tranquil. Delightful. Deafening. Pedal to the metal loud and loud and volume on full in Fenway. First, fire power in the foliage as NASCAR comes to New Hampshire. Then, the game's best rivalry in a pennant race on Sunday Night Baseball. Forget the pretty leaves. Remember the day. It's tomorrow on ABC and ESPN. Notre Dame and Michigan both 0-2 for the first time ever. Mike Hart guaranteed the Wolverines wouldn't get to 0-3. First quarter, oh boy, more problems for Notre Dame's offense. Jimmy Clausen can't handle the rock. Donovan Warren falls on the ball. Yeah, three turnovers for Notre Dame in this game led to 21 points for Michigan. Here's six of them right there. Ryan Mallett hands off to Hart. Ran for over 100 yards and a pair of touchdowns in the first half. And then Mallett, the freshman quarterback, to Adrian Arrington. And Michigan goes on to pummel the Irish. 38 nothing. Notre Dame just 79 yards in the game. Ohio State and Washington, intriguing matchup out in Seattle. Early third quarter, Washington up 7-3. Field goal blocked by Larry Grant. Check out Jim Trussell. You don't see this kind of emotion. Oh, he's getting fired. That's his brand of football, though. Good special teams. Todd Beckman to Brian Robisky, who's become a playmaker now, really a possession guy last year. Yeah, no more Ted Ginn Jr., no more Anthony Gonzalez. Brian Robisky picking up the firepower for the passing game. And Beanie Wells picking up where Antonio Pittman left off. And Ohio State rolls 33-14 over Washington. So the savior will have to wait. Jake Locke, a little bit longer. Bob Davies said Oklahoma's right there with USC, LSU, and Florida among the dominant teams in the country. Well. We got the Sooner highlights coming up next, and you'll see more evidence of what he's talking about. It's the Think Healthy sale at GNC. Stop by and save 30 to 40 percent on your favorite diet and sports nutrition products, including our top selling items. We will not be undersold. Simply bring in a competitor's printed price, and we'll match it. GNC, live well. I started this company with nothing. My parents gave me encouragement, that was all they could give me. Now this company is who I am, and it'll help me deliver on a promise I made to my daughter to help her start a company that will be who she is. At John Hancock, we have the insurance, investment, and retirement products to help build, protect, and sustain the future you've promised yourself. John Hancock, the future is yours. Have a real meal for lunch. Come to KFC for any of our new $2.99 deals. World-famous chicken, choice of a side, and a flaky biscuit. A real deal for lunch for just $2.99 at KFC. down and we want to wipe out our 2007 inventory during the end of summer sell down so you'll get incredible savings on every new ford like ford f-150 its payload and towing make it the big kahuna of pickups now get zero percent apr for 60 months plus a thousand bonus cash on a new f-150 super crew that means you can get over 8800 in finance savings catch it while you can during the end of summer sell down only at your local southern ford dealer be here so that we can show what's going on. We have 100 meteorologists. We've been doing this for 25 years. Somewhere we've built a heck of a trust. We're right there with the people, so they do feel connected to us. If there's a hurricane out there, we're going to be letting you know where that storm is going. The Weather Channel, the Hurricane Authority. Brought to you by the all-new 2007 Lincoln MKX. Part luxury SUV, part luxury sports sedan, all Lincoln. Test drive Lincoln MKX today at your local Lincoln Mercury dealer. Got an update from Alabama taking on Arkansas, and there's Darren McFadden in that Wildcat formation where he takes a direct snap and he doesn't give it up. And McFadden in, he's got 179 yards, and they got a tie ball game now. We'll keep you posted on it. That game over on ESPN. Utah State and Oklahoma, as promised. That's not Adrian Peterson. It just looks like <laughs> Alan Patrick. 23 to the house. From 69 yards away in Oklahoma, 50 points again. 
54-3 over Utah State. Texas had a battle. Central Florida opening their brand new stadium. The flag on the play against Central Florida. Jamal Charles iced it with this run, 35-32, though a little harder than the Horns might have wanted it to be. Inspired play from Central Florida. If you look at these top 25 scores, which one jumps out at you? Yes. Well, I like looking at Rutgers hanging up 59 points. On Norfolk State. Of course. I just, it's, it's amazing to think of all the weapons that Rutgers now has, whether it's Mike Teal, Ray Rice. Taekwon Underwood. Un they have just a slew of, of weapons on this offense right now, and they're putting them to use early. They're going to need them. they got a tough Big East schedule coming up ahead. All right, and we shift from college football to pro football. Chris Berman with a look ahead to Sunday's NFL Act. Thank you very much. Coming up on Sunday NFL Countdown, the punishment has been handed down to Bill Belichick and the Patriots for stealing signs. Our crew answers the question, was it a fair penalty? And Vince Young is a young quarterback trying to assume the role of a leader in Tennessee. How's he doing it? Find out on Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. Eastern. Now let's send it to Mike Tirico and the Monday Night Football crew. Mike? Chris, thanks. Jaws, you've lived it. Tony, you've seen it so many times. When it's the NFC East head-to-head, -head, intense, tight, good football games. And Washington and Philadelphia probably will give us that. 16-13, they both played games of that score last week. The Redskins won in overtime. Donovan McNabb and the Eagles lost. Donovan McNabb will be the biggest star on the field. He is coming off a knee injury. He's missed the endings of three of the last five seasons. So there are some questions about him. In his last four starts, going back to last year, only completed 48% of his passes. Yet people think of him as a great Pro Bowl quarterback. We'll see. And the Redskins won against Miami with a back-to-the-future mentality. In other words, Mike, it was Joe Gibbs' Redskin style of football. Smash mouth, power running, too tight, too back, established a line of scrimmage. And of course, on defense, it wasn't that aggressive attacking style. It was bend and don't break. That is Redskin football that they want Super Bowls with. See if they can take it on the road and win. We'll see you from Philly, 8.30 Eastern on Monday night. All right, guys, second half of our game coming up. Georgia Tech had allowed only 17 points in its first two games, but Matt Ryan and company have 14 on the board. Mark Jones and Bob Davey with the second half coming up. Vengeance has never been so beautiful. Heavenly Sword. Rated T for Teen. Only on PlayStation 3. A rainforest. The ultimate torture test for your deck. Thompson's Water Seal Advanced. The ultimate protection. It seals out 99% of the water right from the start. For a longer lasting deck, get the most powerful protection against water damage guaranteed. Thompson's Water Seal Advanced. We don't need help remodeling our kitchen. I can do this. Trust me. Idea. The Home Depot is the answer. Our home services installers are pros you can trust who use the best materials. And right now, get no payments, no interest for 12 months on all installations of $2.99 or more. My work here is done. Honey, give me the hammer. The Home Depot. You can do it. We, we can help. help. Tommy. Marco. Looking good. I thank you. Love the jacket. Do you? Yes. $90. What? Ooh. Nice shoes. 50 bucks. I'm proud of you. Love the hair. Oh, yeah, my cousin does it. 20 bucks. Very nice. Nice tie. Thanks for thinking my tie is nice. What'd you spend on that? 12 bucks. Double cheeseburger, one dollar. McDonald's melty, beefy double cheeseburger. I'll give you two bucks. Three. What are you made of money? Just one of the extravagant choices on the dollar menu. Are you a dollar millionaire? Home. It's different things to different people. Whatever it means to you, you'll find it on our homepage, century21.com. Century 21, the gold standard. the lights at Bobby Dodd Stadium Grant Field Boston College leading 14 to nothing a battle of a couple of teams nationally ranked in the ACC a pivotal game for both these teams for different reasons 
Boston College won the opening toss, deferred to the second half. Callender and Brooks back deep for the kickoff. And this is going to be Brooks. He's the faster of the two. Brooks out of Orlando takes it out to the 28 yard line where they will start first down and 10. And Bob Davey coming into the game. Hey, Georgia Tech said, we have to quiet the critics that say, hey, we haven't played anybody. Boston College, meanwhile, said, hey, we're going to validate our 2 0 start with a good performance. They have. I mean, it's been all Boston College. You know, what jumps out of me? The quarterback, Matt Ryan, the wide receivers of Boston College dropped seven passes last week. They've been on fire. And the difference in the coaching, the transition from Tom O'Brien to Coach Jack. Boston College Mark throws the ball down the field a lot more than they ever did under Tom O'Brien. This time they go underneath to Whitworth. And Whitworth brought down to the 32-yard line by Pat Clark, a sure tackle that time in the secondary. Well, we talked about Matt Ryan putting up some very prodigious statistics. 268 yards passing with a touchdown. Stoking them to the 14-0 lead. It's a short choice, meanwhile. Came into the contest one of the nation's leading rushers at 196 in week one over 100 in week two tonight just nine yards rushing second down running it into the boundary that time robertson making the tackle on whitworth as we go down to stacy now mark i just caught up with georgia tech coach chan gailey i asked him what he said to his guys at the half he said i told him it wasn't going to be easy he said we got to go pitch a fight we're not going to go a shutout even if we got to take this baby to overtime but he said guys the thing we got to do we've got to run the football that was the lasting message mark and uh, so far the numbers not adding up on the ground for Georgia Tech. We have a player shaking up down to the field. That's Matt Tennant, the starting center, a six foot four inch, 285 pound sophomore. Mark, you look at these statistics from the first half. I mean, fortunate for Georgia Tech, it's not worse. I mean, you look at the total yardage, 311 to 86. I mean, the rush yards, Georgia Tech only seven yards rushing. Again, you know, you came into this game, Georgia Tech, number four in the nation, rush offense, BC, number four rush defense. I still think Georgia Tech has to throw this football to win. If you're Boston College, and I don't think they will, but don't even think about getting conservative. Let Matt Ryan sling that football. It's a, been a good so, formula so far. It's uh, good to see Tenda come off the field under his own power. Kevin Sheridan comes in for him. He's the backup center. Always have to be careful of the snap, the exchange between center and quarterback, whatever new center comes into the ball game. And Georgia Tech with the backup corner, Pat Clark in the game, a freshman safety number one, Morgan Burnett. So two guys in that secondary mark that really want starters for Georgia Tech. See if Ryan can exploit that here on third down. Has the time. The pass complete. Depending on the spot, Gunnell is going to be apparently a little bit short of the first down. Based on that spot, he appears to be about a foot short. D.J. Jones made the sure tackle on the play. And it's fourth down coming up for B.C. Georgia Tech struggled early in the game with tackling. Man, that is a great tackle by D.J. Jones right there, the safety mark. DJ Jones called the most athletic and dynamic player in the secondary by John Tenuta, the defensive coordinator. Tyler Evans back deep for this punt, standing in his own 23 yard line. Johnny Ears, and a punt from his own 25. It's off a high spiral. Fair catch called at the 18 yard line, where it'll be first down and 10 after the 44 yard punt. Georgia Tech changes from last year, nine and four a season ago, seven and one in league play. Reggie Ball and Calvin Johnson out, in Taylor Bennett at quarterback, and while still waiting for one person to emerge from the wide receivers and choice, with nine consecutive games of over 100 yards rushing, coming into this one, but not the case so far in the script in the first two quarters of play. They get a chance to change it right here. First down and ten. Choice between the tackles over the 20. Out to the 22. Well, Frank Spaziani's defense has dialed up a pretty good game plan, Bob. 
no question. And I mentioned Frank Spaziana, John Tanuta, pretty good friends. Their schemes on defense, very similar. John Tanuta's gotten a lot more publicity nationally than Frank Spaziani. He may have taken it personal. I mean, he's doing a great job tonight. Frank Spaziani said that he wanted to stay at Boston College, albeit the coaching change. His family comfortable there and a comfortable looking run by Rashawn Grant. First down, Georgia Tech. We go to Stan Breck for the Sports Center in game update. All right, Mark, Arkansas and Alabama. At one point, Arkansas was down 21 0, but Casey Dick and Peyton Hillis. And now the Hogs have taken the lead. It's 38-31 with eight minutes to go at Alabama. We'll keep you posted. Big Suey. Big Suey. We're going to be there next week. Yes. Sets up a nice game between Arkansas and Kentucky. And now Choice with the direct snap runs it into a wall of tacklers from B.C. Nowhere to go that time. And unlike Notre Dame, which struggled to line up against this formation, Bob, BC was right there. Mark, you're right. You're going to see Taylor Bennett out here. The direct snap to the Sar choice, then a little counter play. But, you know, in some ways, I think this is a win for BC because Georgia Tech struggling right now to find something. I mean, they're not going to make a living doing that now that they've already exposed it against Notre Dame. I mean, at some point, Taylor Bennett, you got to make some plays and make some throws. And make the throws downfield. Second down and 10. Go East West incomplete intended for Rashawn Grant. It'll be third down and 10 coming up. You know, it's funny. I mean, you've done a lot of Georgia Tech games, Mark. They just beat Reggie Ball, up, the former quarterback, who I love because he was so competitive. I don't think people really appreciated Reggie Ball. I know he was a little bit inconsistent, but I thought he was a heck of a football player. Well, Taylor Bennett brought up a good point to us in our meetings with him. He said he learned a lot from the fact that Reggie Ball was able to handle a lot of the criticisms, and he stood back and watched Reggie take the heat and deal with it very well. Yeah, good point. I mean, pro town, they're hard on the quarterbacks, whether it's a college team or a pro team. And it fires a dart complete at the 42-yard line. Smith makes the catch and stays on his feet. Oh, Greg Smith with a little bit of magic. And is that a red flag? He got roughed up and thrown to the ground out of bounds. A missed tackle that time by Jamie Silva, the free safety of Boston College. Mark, you go back, if Georgia Tech can win this football game, that's a little bit of an offensive pass interference right there pushing up. Great effort. You're allowed to put your hand in that face as an offensive player. I think that should have been a 15-yard penalty late if we let this run. I mean, he's clearly out of bounds. Well, Kevin Aiken's number seven. I mean, he didn't exactly fling him down there. So I think probably a good note. sell it. Let's go back and look. I thought he made the spin move and stayed in bounds, but they're clearly going to review the spot. As it is now, it appears they're making the, marking the line of scrimmage a yard short of the first down. Trying to figure out what exactly is in debate here. They're checking the spot of the ball. It's hard to see right there. Still in bounds there. Right, that right foot. I don't think you can overturn that call. If we look at that angle again, it all comes down to that right foot. I think he stayed in bounds, Mark. He sure did. That would Excuse me, they would overrule this call because they marked that, in my opinion, short. Yeah, that would give him the first down. He stepped out of bounds beyond that marker that you see off to the left of your screen. Still in bounds. Still right in bounds. He's in bounds. He was in bounds. That's a first down. Georgia Tech is going to get a first down out of this, yeah. so the right thing is done. Yeah, I, I agree. That is indisputable video evidence. And that's the standard to overturn the call on the field. Greg Smith with a great effort to elude a couple of tackles on the play. But it's early in this season. Pretty early in this game. This is a critical call. I wonder what they saw well, that we don't. I guess it's the indisputable evidence. Left foot's in. 
right foot is in. He's in. The toe is in. The heel That's is in. in the air. The heel was in the air. Exactly right. I think that was a bad spot, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Instead, Brooks comes back in for his eighth punt of the night from his own 30. A high spiral. He's done a great job for them tonight in the kicking game. A fair catch called to the 23-yard line by Tribble. Boston College pitching a shutout so far, much to the frustrations of Taylor Bennett on the sidelines. Back after this. dollar value American Express branded award card when you buy a set of eligible Bridgestone tires. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. Fall in love with melty cheese. Taco Bell's new cheesy beefy melt. To get seasoned beef, melty, melty, and even more glorious melty cheese, think outside the bun. Are these numbers right? Yes. Do you know what this means? It means we have doubled in the last six months. So we're gonna have to hire more people and move into a bigger space to get those key card things. But we'll need to order a lot more. Wood? But what if this continues? Dave, isn't that kind of the idea? Citibank Business Bank. Whatever your growing business needs, Citibank's there with guidance and customized solutions to help your business thrive. Come to City and let's get it done. Women seem to be coming on to me in an unusual manner. You're that Charlie? When you have sex with someone and then they find their true love. You got the ticket to the big show! Oh! But on Friday... <laughs> the only one he wants is the one. Now? Where do I get the... He can't touch. If you sleep with her, you'll lose her forever. I gotta go. Dane Cook, Jessica Alba. Does your phone receive pictures? Good luck, Chuck. Rated R. In theaters everywhere Friday. Dedication. Hard work. While always looking to the future. <laughs> That's what makes an ACC student athlete. Me. Developing the best of myself to become a better person. Making it all come together, achieving, preparing for tomorrow. Then it hit me. I'm also preparing for the rest of my life. The Atlantic Coast Conference, striving for tomorrow, today. This ESPN2 telecast is available in brilliant high definition on ESPN2 HD, presented by Pioneer Guru. Beautiful the city, night, huh? Oh, the city of Atlanta. No humidity. Low at night. This is your kind of city. Oh, love it. Had a Bright chance lights. to. Bright lights. <laughs> had, huh? had a chance to see some history today. Went to Ebenezer Baptist Church and the Martin Luther King Historical Museum. Hit it. On me, that's Boston College's Matt Ryan sacked on the play by Vance Walker. Good pressure right up the middle. That's the second sack of the night for Georgia Tech's defense. Mark, you mentioned it when Kevin Sheridan came in at center for Matt Tennant. You worry about that quarterback center exchange. Just check the snap right here out of the shotgun. Good snap. Good snap. Maybe a little hard. And it didn't look like he expected the ball. But Cliff Ramsey on the recovery. Big fumble recovery. Right through him. Kind of maybe a little bit of a change up outside to the left of the strike. A little bit of a knuckler almost, yeah. though, right? Yeah. Something uh, Tim Wakefield would be proud of. And Tell you, you watch that Notre Dame game today. Ooh, was that unbelievable with the shotgun snaps? Oh, First snap of the game. Well, no pretty snap it over the quarterback side. Actually, the running back who was a quarterback. Right? Georgia Tech's rushing numbers in this game look like the numbers they held Notre Dame to a couple of games ago. Boston College trying to run it. Calendar back to the line of scrimmage. And Stan, what's up in the Commonwealth battle? Louisville and Kentucky. Mark, it's been back and forth all night, and it continues. Andre Woodson, play action to Jacob Tammy for the touchdown. And Kentucky is back on top now, 33-28. Still plenty of time in the fourth quarter. It's going to be fun down the stretch. Wow. Five-point lead. Rich Brooks get things turned around there a little bit of Kentucky. 
see right there, Boston College on third down, one for five in the last six attempts. Ryan over set up a screen against the Heat. Up to the 30 yard line, well, shy of the 30 is Andre Callender, but there's a flag down back at the eight yard line. Yeah, that was a pretty good matchup between big Michael Johnson and the big offensive tackle 77 Gosder Sharulis. I think they're going to get big Gosder right here for holding Mark. He's the leader up front. Oh, 73 yeah. 19 a senior projected to be a first day guy in the NFL draft. Holding on the offense number 77 penalties decline fourth down. Gosner last year was getting around town. Get this, Bob, in uh, Matthias Kiwanuka's old car. Could he use to ride here? <laughs> oh, what? No question about that one. And again, I'll go back to this Boston College deep snapper. Not great times, Mark, but momentum starting to come to, Bob, to Georgia Tech right now. They could use a big play in the kicking game here. Tyler Evans standing at his own 30 yard line. Setting up a return, Georgia Tech is. Their catch called at the 35 for Taylor Bennett. At some point, Taylor Bennett will have to get some semblance of offense going and get this Tech machine rolling a little bit. 65 points last week, none so far. Did we give the new Eclipse a 263 horsepower MyVec V6? Because. Now get 0% APR or a $2,000 factory rebate at the Mitsubishi Time to Rally event. It's been all folks today. Peyton's calling an audible. Hey, you, come here. It's 28 to 3. If you had NFL Sunday tickets on Direct TV, you can watch up to 14 games every Sunday. So instead of watching this, you watch my brother Eli. Join them and get four months free of our best TV package when you buy NFL Sunday ticket only on Direct TV. Everybody up! We up! Lay it on the line until the final whistle blows, and if you do that, we cannot lose. We are Marshall. Buy it Tuesday on DVD and high def. Hold on, ladies, ladies! When you score, you gotta add some sassy to your. Woo! Like, right? And, oh, 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 what? press? No, I'm caught in the net. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I'm a fly in your web, ladies. Good, right? Good. In the first ultra adaptable room from Marriott. ESPN's College Football Primetime brought to you by Mitsubishi Motors, driven to thrill, and Direct TV. For the most sports in HD, you have to get Direct TV. Look on campus at the Matthews Athletic Heritage Center, housing the athletic heritage for the Yellow Jacket fans, the center chronicles Tech's history in all the sports with an emphasis, obviously, on its many accomplishments. And this is choice around the left end, stopped by Jalon Dunbar. And Taylor Bennett, the first-year starter, Bob, you have to admire a young man that waits three years to finally get his turn and get the starting job. A lot of people end up transferring under those kind of circumstances, but he's got to get something going. Yeah, I mean, interesting guy. Only recruited by Boise State and Georgia Tech out of high school. You know, look at this BC defense. Wake Forest threw 60 passes on them. NC State threw 54, both for well over 350 yards. So you're going to have to throw the football. They run it instead. This is the freshman Jonathan Dwyer lowering his hat. And putting it on the would-be tackler that came up 
on run support. Dwyer, the freshman, named ACC Rookie of the Week after his three touchdown performance last week. And we have an injured player that's Taji Morris for Boston College, struggling to get to his feet. Ten yard pickup on the play. Look, we're going to look here at the freshman in motion. They're going to run the sweep to him. You get a pretty good block by Tashar Choice. Right here, it ends up just really split backs. There's Tashar Choice right out there on the corner on Taji Morris, I believe. And Taji was injured a little bit on that play. Yes, he was. And first down in the 46. Choice with a nice move through the hole. And Choice across midfield and into Boston College territory on a four yard gain. Well, Back to Taylor Bennett, Bobby. Interestingly enough, a pretty diverse student athlete, an international affairs major, says that, you know, aside from speaking Russian fluently and Spanish, he wants to be a CIA agent in a clandestine, secretive type of government. There's a, right now a, doing, unfortunately, a good job at being anonymous. <laughs> pretty good tying that up. I, mean, that was, I was wondering where you were going. I knew there was something coming at the end of that. that was, had to work it in. Looks like they might get a free one. A little movement up front as Thomas makes the catch. A little movement on the interior defensive line for Boston College. The crowd comes to life a little bit, but you get the feeling that Georgia Tech, because of the play of their defense here, Mark, early in the second half, has created good field position for their offense. This is a key third down right now. And again, a young corner, Roderick Rollins in, down at the bottom of the field, opposite of DeWan Triple. I would throw the football at this young corner. He's matched up against James Johnson, but they go the other way. Pass is going to be ruled incomplete at the 38-yard line intended for Thomas. Thomas protesting the officials falling on deaf ears incomplete. Mark, he was open and a poor throw by Taylor Bennett. I mean, he is wide open on the curl route. But right here, there's no one in that window. Look, Mark, that's a wide open throwing lane. He bounced that football in there. Sets up a fourth down in a punting situation. And Brooks with his ninth punt of the night. That's unfortunately for Georgia Tech a career high. You have to complete that throw, Mark. That was an easy throwing throw. Brooks will try and lay this one inside the 20, which he will do, but not much more. Never have you heard over 50,000 so silent tonight. <laughs> hey. They're going to come to life now, though, because you're doing this who am I alumni question. You're going to bring them back right here. It takes a lot of resuscitation on this one. <laughs> yeah, put it up on the Jumbotron. Why it's not? Okay, he graduated from Georgia Tech in 1922 as an amateur, won 13 major golf championships in 20 attempts. I'm the only person I've accomplished winning golf's Grand Slam. Who am I? Bobby Jones. And of course, uh, golf pretty big in the area here in Atlanta with Tiger Woods doing his thing during the last three rounds. Downfield and incomplete in a flag throw. And a mismatch against the linebacker, Billy Guyton and Rich Gunnell. That's a favorable matchup for Boston College. You hear the reaction of the fans during the replay on the big board. And it's pass interference against Georgia Tech. First thing, you're not going to get this very often against John Tanuga. Man-to-man coverage with Gary Guyton, the linebacker. Defense. Oh, that's a terrible call. That is a terrible, terrible call. I mean, Gary Guyton looked back for the football. It was perfect coverage on Rich Gunnell. Let's take a look at it again, but I think that was a terrible call. If anything, Rich Gunnell used his right hand. That's a poor call right there. How about the linebacker stride for stride? Should we get the technique and looking back for the ball? You can't call that. Well, how about some of the DBs? The way he covered. It brought the crowd to life. Yeah. I mean, that was a bad call. 7.20 to go in the third quarter. Matt Ryan pulling the trigger. That pass complete to Challenger. Down to the 45 yard line. It appears to be enough for another Boston College first down. A pickup of 12 on the play.
tell you what, BC's doing a great job of, of changing their protections and also the running backs, whether it's Callender or Whitworth, staying in and blocking the linebacker, Mark. They're doing a great job of pass protection. Well, the good news for Boston College, too, Bob, is that Matt Tennant, the center, back in snapping the ball for them. He was injured a few plays ago. Ryan, oh, another dark complete at the 39 yard line. That one to Robinson as we go back to Stan Ferret for this update. All right, Mark, it's a 30 30 Sports Center update. Notre Dame just 79 yards of offense, and Michigan dropped them to 0 3 with a 38 0 win over the Irish. At the Tour Championship, Zach Johnson shot 60, but Tiger Woods had a 64, and that was enough for him to maintain his three stroke lead. And as we mentioned, Michigan with a 38 0 win over Notre Dame. Notre Dame 0 3 for only the second time ever. Irish really struggling. Matt Ryan not struggling under heat, though. That's going to be a hold against Boston College, a flag thrown in the backfield. Cliff Ramsey. I'll say this for Boston College, Bob. When they commit holding penalties, <laughs> they do get their money's worth. And you know what? Michael Johnson once again right in the grill of Matt Ryan. Why not take a good penalty like that and protect your quarterback? You don't want Matt Ryan hobbling through a season like he did a year ago. Yeah, I think you bring up a good All point. And Michael Johnson, 6'7", 250-pound junior. As we look at Cliff Ramsey, this is going to be an obvious one right there. I mean, he just tackled him. You bring up a good point. I mean, I know you hate to accept it if you're BC. That's five or six holding penalties. But they have three new offensive linemen starting in this game. It's interesting how a lot of the offensive players for Boston College say that it's like learning a new system, like being a freshman again. I need a new coaching staff, but here tonight, Enduring and learning very well. Lloyd with the reception working against Roberson. And Roberson shaken up on the far side of the field. College football primetime here on ESPN 2 under the lights at Grant Field. Bobby Dodd Stadium, number 21 Georgia Tech against number 15 Boston College. I'm Mark Jones along with Bob Davies. Stacey Dale's down on the field. The first ever ACC meeting between these two teams. Boston College, the lower ranked team of the two coming in, pardon me, and uh, Georgia Tech leading the all time series, but things not going their way tonight. And they've already had several injuries in the secondary, as Stacey Dales has chronicled for us. And particularly, Mark, at corner, as you're going to watch Avery Roberson now there, he did drop that helmet down and pretty much make contact with the top of his helmet. But, you know, the corner position in college football, professional football, Mark, is so critical. And right now, Matt Ryan is exposing the outside area of the football field against these corners of Georgia Tech. And Ryan uh, rated as one of the top quarterbacks in the country. Roberson, meanwhile, a uh, hometown native here in Atlanta, Georgia. And you can't say enough about the numbers that Ryan has put up tonight coming off of a subpar week last week where he was just 15 of 34. Mark let's take a look at this again. You know I talk about a good football position. A good football position is your helmet up your eyes up not your helmet down and you look right there. That's a great form tackle other than that his, his helmet is not up. His head is not up. I hear coaches say that all the time, Bob, but is it possible to have your head up on every hit that you make? You have to, Mark. Preventative injury, plus you have to be able to see what you're going to hit. That makes perfect sense. But, I mean, you can't always, you know, get in the ideal position. I mean, things happen. Ryan going up top, has a man. Incomplete at the two-yard line and a flag thrown as Robinson couldn't make the catch. Pat Clark laying on his back in the end zone could be whistled as the perpetrator here. Mark, the thing you see though is the difference of Steve Logan calling those plays for Boston College and throwing that football down the field. I think that is a great offensive attack. Go after these corners every snap right now. Logan, former uh, head coach at East Carolina, there he is up there in the booth calling the plays. A native of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Pretty eclectic guy. Plays the guitar. Uh, 
for about 45 minutes a day, Bob, but not many offensive coordinators around like that. Yeah, plays tennis every day at lunchtime, too. <laughs> I guess you have a great quarterback, you can do that. But again, Georgia Tech, a zone coverage team, it turns into man to man. Let's watch right here, Pat Ryan. Close. Mm. Close. But again, he was beat. Ryan is six of his last six passing. Oh boy, what a catch. Going up high. That time it was Clarence Megwa making the catch. And I'll tell you what right now about Matt Ryan. He's playing this game on national television tonight, Mark. He's putting on a show. The next three weeks against UMass, Bowling Green, and who's the third? Army. He's going to have tremendous numbers. This kid right now, Thrust I don't it. want to throw the Heisman out. Go ahead and do it. I'm, I'm with you. you. He is good. I'll buy the first ticket for the bandwagon. It'll be swelling by the minute. Hands it off to Whitworth. Whitworth with a nice move. A little shake. Touchdown. Boston College scores. And Boston College breaking this Georgia Tech defense down right now. Matt Ryan and his offensive coordinator in tandem, Steve Logan, working in concert, lacerating that defense of Georgia Tech to the tune of 20 to nothing right now. We're 6.03 to go here at Bobby Dodd Stadium. And Mark, can Taylor Bennett throw it well enough to bring Georgia Tech back? I haven't seen it so far. He has misfired on a bunch of throws tonight. Whitworth, meanwhile, with his second touchdown rushing today. And you think Matty Ice is Matty Ice right now? I don't know. He looks like Matty Hot. Getting his teammates all stoked up. They don't play here in the A. Back with more after this. Mitsubishi Outlander. Out everything. Everything. Get your Outlander with 1.9% APR at the Mitsubishi Time to Rally event. Seven showdown at Jenkins Hyundai Bradenton. The 08s are on the way, and the manufacturer's given special permission to do whatever it takes to make room. Get 0% financing for 72 months and drastic discounts on over $8 million of new and used inventory in one giant location. Like new 07 Hyundai Sonata for $12,990 or $179 a month, or new 07 Santa Fe's for just $16,888 or $229 a month, plus America's best 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty. It's the 2007 showdown at Jenkins Hyundai Bradenton on 2503 First Street East in Bradenton. With auto owner's insurance, policies come with something extra, real people, people who live in your hometown, like Insurance Service of Sarasota, a local independent auto owner's agent providing personal, business, and financial policies since 1973. While some insurance companies are no more than an 800 number or a voicemail menu, we're here to help in good times and in bad. For the best rates and coverages on the Sun Coast, call Insurance Service of Sarasota, located at 873 South Tamiami Trail in Osprey. IBM presents the 25 greatest players ever. Number 25, Ernie Nevers. Ernie Nevers was an All-American at Stanford University and played in the 1925 Rose Bowl. Stanford coach Pop Warner called Nevers the football player without a fault. IBM getting it done. Well, the top 25 greatest players in college football was voted on by a blue ribbon panel of former coaches, players, and media members. We'll continue to reveal up to the number one spot over the course of the season, announcing the greatest player in college football in the last week of the regular season. Bennett with the kick after that five play, 82 yard scoring drive. A scoring drive aided by a couple of controversial pass interference calls. G.J. Donnelly 
with the kickoff return that time for Georgia Tech. Mark, you talk about the two pass interference. Here's what we talk about zone blocking as we freeze this right here. A little bit too late right there. Lyman all start out, Mark, blocking an area, kind of an orchestrated play where they all go with a landmark. Big touchdown right there by L.V. Whitlow. Well, let's see what Taylor Bennett can get done here for Georgia Tech. Under six minutes to go in the third quarter of play. Georgia Tech with two convincing wins in their first two games but have shown no signs of life tonight, and that could have been picked off by Tony Clark. It's intended for Greg Smith, who really wasn't even close to the pass. Second and ten coming up. The thing you notice right now, just how lethargic and what a lack of confidence this Georgia Tech offense has because BC's taken away their lifeline, the running game, Mark. And right now, no one, including Georgia Tech, believes that Taylor Bennett can throw the ball well enough to win this game. That's the problem. He needs to make a throw to get some confidence on this football team. He does want to correct myself. That was Kevin Akins that almost had the pick on that last play. This one complete to Smith. Curling forward at the 48-yard line, working against Gauss that time. And a first and 10 after the 13-yard pickup. But still the question begs, how much of that vertical passing game can they integrate at Georgia Tech? With Taylor Bennett pulling the trigger. Mark, interesting right now, Dewan Tribble not in the football game. You have two young quarterbacks, cornerbacks, Gaz, number nine, and also number 20, Roderick Rollins. Good opportunity right now. Throw the ball down the field. A three receiver formation for Taylor Bennett. Looking for the double move, and he decides to take off, but there's a flag thrown in the backfield. Bennett with a good set of wheels. Taylor Bennett with a smooth run. This one looks like it's going to come back. It's against Georgia Tech. What a great effort that time, all for naught, on the part of Taylor Bennett. Holding offense, number 61. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Well, first of all, a good plan by Georgia Tech. They go with the double move right here. Little stutter and go on the young cornerback, DeLeon Gaz, number nine. Here's the whole 64, Andrew Gardner. I'm sorry, it was actually on 61, Matt Rhodes, the left guard. And it showed a little bit of escapability, some wheels. He better have some escapability right now at first and... 20. And back it up on Georgia Tech. That's peak in motion. Peak with the catch. Oh. And he took a hit at the 40 yard line. Kevin Aikens bringing some knock on that play. As we go downstairs to Stacy. Yeah, Mark, one of my roles down here on the sideline is to look at the moods of both teams. I've been scouring <laughs> the sideline for both teams, and if you look at these Georgia Tech players right now, specifically this defense, after those questionable calls, the penalties, this is a dejected group right now, Mark. Bob talked about it. The life has been sucked out of them a little bit, if you will. They really need a big play offensively to happen in this game, to have any bit of life to go into this fourth quarter, guys, which has been their mantra, their mantra all season, win the fourth quarter and finish games, which they didn't do last year. Yeah, that uh, was part of the reason why they finished the season on a three-game slide. Choice brought down to the 43-yard line, albeit they lost those last three games, including the bowl game, by three points or less. On that shot of the bench, that says it all. And what happens, your defense starts blaming the offense a little bit. I don't care how high character you have, how good a kid you've had. At some point, you have to get some productivity out of this offense. When you look over there on that defense, there's some grumbling going on in that sideline. Now, this would be a perfect time for Tashar Choice to give them one of his famous speeches to get them all amped up, but he's on the field right now. Letting his plane do the talking. Downfield open. <laughs> Incomplete. Both Peak and Smith couldn't hang on to it. And Jamie Silva knocked it loose to make sure. Yeah, Mark, I mean, that's a play you have to have. I mean, not the greatest route as you had Peek and Smith in the same area of the field. 
I mean, that would have been a huge first down. Oh, boy. Never really had possession. Not really sure Silver <laughs> really knocked that out too much, but had an opportunity right there. Greg Smith, uh, first year starter. And in comes the punt team, Durant Brooks, with his 10th punt of the night. That tells you a lot about the lack of offense tonight for Georgia Tech. Wow, unfortunately, he might be, unfortunately, he might be their best weapon tonight on special teams. Durant Brooks, this is going to be marked at the one yard line down by Morgan Burnett, a 57 yard punt stand for it. Back to you in the studio. Mark, what a finish for Arkansas and Alabama. John Parker Wilson to Matt Cadell. This set up by a pass interference call, and Alabama comes from behind to win it 41 38. Career highs of 327 yards and four touchdowns for Wilson running Major Applewhite's offense. Signature win for Nick Saban already. <laughs> Wait a second now. Sign Signature win. It was 41 38. I thought Nick was a defensive guy. <laughs> He's an offensive guru. Wait a now. second now. <laughs> He's an offensive guru now. Wait a second. It's only the, yeah, the guru title now. <laughs> you can always switch that guru thing from offense to defense as long as you keep your guru card. Perhaps to see if it went into the end zone, just thinking aloud. Yeah, Mark, just to clarify this rule, you are allowed to have your feet in the end zone on the goal line does not matter as long as the ball does not clear the plane of the goal line so right here yeah that's a good that, that, that to me now we don't have a great angle coming right down that goal line that looked like Morgan Burnett number one kept that ball to me from going into the end zone well, as far as the replay calls have gone tonight they haven't gone Georgia Tech's way a couple of times I agree Mark I agree like you said you're allowed to have your feet in the end zone as you're down the ball as long as it's outside of the end zone but you know one thing you find out normally the team that's playing the hardest and playing the best usually gets the calls it's funny how it works out right? but it always works with a team that's playing the hardest and the best get some breaks and Georgia Tech trying to down this thing at the one yard line and you know if you really sit back and think about it it might not matter the way that Matt the Ryan is throwing the ball the punt has been reversed. we're gonna spot the ball just short of the one yard line coming out the first did he say the spot has been reversed sure did yeah I might have misspoken on that You know, it may have been all about exactly where the ball was spotted. Not if it was a touchback or not. It may have been about that yard or half yard difference in the spot. Matt Ryan working out of the shadows of his own goalposts under the lights. Well, he made a launch one on the field right here. Gets rid of it. He almost intercepted by Wheeler. Philip Wheeler, the All-American candidate, a middle linebacker. Tell me about that BB fitting through the keyhole. Yeah, yeah sometimes that keyhole is not that, not even a keyhole size. A little smaller than that, and fortunately for Matt Ryan, it didn't cost him anything. He tried to fit that one in there. Watch Philip Wheeler. That's why he's a linebacker. That would have been a touchdown. And one of the fans threw something on the field in the end zone. So really now taking appropriate action. Take a second down and 10 for Boston College. It might be the only way to get Matt Ryan off of his game tonight. Uh, worrying about projectiles. Well, we certainly don't endorse anything like that. Out of the end zone, incomplete. Intended for purpose. Bowen on the coverage from his linebacker spot sets up. Third and ten very quickly by kind of sense right now that down in that punt inside the one is kind of Georgia Tech's last gasp right now to get some emotion and some enthusiasm. The same thing for this crowd. So this third down right now though, is critical because they're on resuscitation right now. And they're no on oxygen trying to get something to get excited about. 
looking for parts in a big way. Boston College hasn't been that proficient on third down in this half. Short of the first down of the five yard line, the pass complete to Rob Hartley, challenger. And a big punt coming up now by Johnny Ayers of Boston College. They could use George Taylor a huge play in the kicking game. Let's see who they send back deep to this one. It's going to be Tyler Evans. Mark, when your offense is as anemic as Georgia Tech has been, it has to be special teams or defense that creates a play. Right here, it doesn't get any better for Georgia Tech. Create a play on special teams. Nice punt by Ayers. Boy, it drives Evans all the way back. Here's 40. Got a nice block. And Evans into Boston College territory at the 47-yard line. A 53-yard punt and a clutch punt by Ayers that time. 12 yards on the return. Well, maybe not the biggest punt that Ayers has gotten this year. Or the biggest hit. That one coming off of Daisuke Matsuzaka of the Red Sox early in spring training. How's that for a claim to fame? Didn't exactly take him deep, Bob. A little punch and Judy single, yeah, a double. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of amazing that BC <laughs> plays the Red Sox, huh? It's yeah. kind of neat. And Red Sox taking on the Yankees Sunday night baseball. Don't forget on ESPN. Wide open. That's the tight end again. Pete. Pete becoming one of Bennett's favorite targets tonight. First down. A little juice right now in this stadium. Taylor Bennett hits the big tight end. Colin Peak right in the soft spot of the zone. Right there. He splits the two linebackers. Good throw, Mark. He picked up 14 on the catch. First down from the 33 of Boston College. Little bunch formation off to the left of Taylor Bennett. They run that way. Choice getting to the edge. Choice with the first down, tips out of bounds at the 21. And there's a late flag on the play, thrown right at the 21-yard line. And to Shark Choice comes up hobbling, favoring his right leg. Let's go back to the studio with Stan. All right, Mark. Pete Carroll is 56 years old today, celebrating his birthday. And at 56, that means he's got one high school All-American running back for every year he's been alive, or it just seems that way. Chauncey Washington with a touchdown there. Trojans up 35-10 at Nebraska. Holding on the offense. Number eight. Thanks, Austin. So I guess Bob, USC stays in your top four. <laughs> yeah, they were 3.5. They just went to four. Probably 4.5. You know, every year, they went to Auburn a couple years ago. Last year, they went to Arkansas early. Going into Lincoln, Nebraska, Mark, but what a huge holding penalty yeah. on Demarius Thomas, number eight. Nine penalties, Bob, against Georgia Tech tonight for a total of 90 yards and, and an even more ignominious exit as Tashar Choice coming off the field. Jonathan Please Dwyer comes in. I had that happen over there on the opposing sideline. It is warned to ask the Georgia Tech crowd not to throw something at Boston College's bench. I've had that. Keep your helmet on. You go get back. It was at home. It was in Notre Dame Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Never a good sign when things happen like that at home. Jonathan Dwyer comes into the ball game for Tashar Chules. Dwyer named ACC Rookie of the Week coming off of 138 yards rushing. See what he does here on this toss. Dwyer with a nice burst down the 23 yard line. Trying to bump up the volume a little bit on this offense. Bowman making the stop for Boston College. Under two minutes to go as they work on choice on the sidelines. The freshman, meanwhile, Dwyer picking up eight. You don't feel the speed difference in this game that I thought maybe you would. I thought Georgia Tech would be the faster team. Yeah. You really haven't sensed that though tonight. You might have something to do with the good work of Jason Lascano, the strength and conditioning Maybe. coach for Boston College. Now this young freshman tailback, Dwyer, 21, you feel his speed. 
bring in the chains and measure for the first down. But yeah, Bob, you bring up a good point. Dwyer showed a good burst and coming close to the first down. Choice, meanwhile, on the sidelines. A pretty good stable of running backs at Georgia Tech. Rashawn Grant touching the ball a few times tonight as well. And they're that much short of a first down. Let's call it about 18 inches. Stretch out to Shard Choice on the sidelines. Uh, it's interesting that Chan Gailey compared one of his runs last week to some of the great runs he's seen from Emmett Smith, the Hall of Famer, formerly of the Dallas Cowboys. Of course, Gailey would know something about Emmett Smith having coached him with the Dallas Cowboys. But uh, no such room for to Shard Choice tonight in the open field. Well, if you're Boston College, conservative right here, Mark. Play pass if I'm Boston College because you know Georgia Tech's going to go for it on fourth down. What a great opportunity for Georgia Tech to throw the football right here. You've got James Johnson split to the bottom of your screen, and that's Greg Smith in motion at the top. They run the little counter to Dwyer, the freshman, and he gets the first down at the 23 yard line. Jonathan Dwyer, Georgia Project, product, pardon me, six feet. 225 pound freshman. That's a pretty good punch. No question, Mark. You know, both these schools and these teams so similar. You know, both of them really trying to get to that, that term we call the next level. I mean, Georgia Tech's been to 10 straight bowl games, BC eight straight bowl games. But you know what? It hasn't been that BCS ball. And I think both these teams were just high aspirations this year to get to a BCS ball. Get the first down, and Stacey Dales has more on Tashar Choice. Yeah, Mark, the word on the Georgia Tech sideline is that he has injured his right hamstring. It's unknown as to whether or not he'll return, but knowing the fight within him, guys, it's likely we'll see him again. Tashar Choice, a transfer from Oklahoma, and uh, easily the leader of that offensive group. Last year led the conference in rushing almost 1,500 yards in all. Let's see what Bennett can do without him. A pass a little bit low and incomplete intended for Pete. Boy, what a world of difference without, uh, can I say Calvin Johnson's name again? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, get, just to get it out there? You know what, though? There's two things when you play Georgia Tech. You know they're going to blitz on defense. Boston College has done a great job protecting that blitz. The other thing on offense, you know Georgia Tech is going to run it. But you know what? Boston College is taking a runaway. So this is a Georgia Tech team that's totally out of their comfort zone, Mark. They, they don't want to throw the ball as much as they're going to be forced to throw it. They'd be throwing into trouble into a Boston College defense that leads the nation in interceptions. They are fourth in rush defense, stuck in Dwyer that time. Got about two. Brace was the first one to make contact. You know, we were talking about Brace and his size and his girth, but man, he has been really agile and hostile up there tonight, Bob Davey. <laughs> and mobile. <laughs> I sure has. But you know what? You can't find it. These guys are so hard to block. I'm not sure he's 6'3" which makes him even harder to block if he's shorter than that. But I mean, those 330 pound guys in there, watch him right here, big 60. Yeah. That's a load in there, man. He reached around somebody to make the stop on the play. Third down and nine. They're one of 11 on third downs tonight. That one complete The Smith. Made it down to the team, got him up for the first down. Breathing a little bit of life into that offense. He picks up the 11. You know, on the first time tonight, we've really seen Taylor Bennett step into it and let it go. I mean, he threw this football on a rope out there. Again, had some height on the throw. He didn't bounce it in there. Really steps into it right there. No pressure. Dwayne Tri uh, Tribble missed tackle right there in the open field. And, uh, Taylor Bennett under a lot of heat. He might not be the uh, best athlete in this coupling. Athletic super coupling with he and his girlfriend. Uh, Volleyball star here on campus at Georgia Tech. <laughs> they won nothing. Trying to get something going. They hand it off to the freshman. Dwyer fighting for every yard out there, but stopped up. Tyrone Pruitt got there first, and he was joined by about six of his friends. Frank Spaziani's defense pitching a shutout here 
at Grant Field, Bobby Dobb Stadium, as Boston College leads 21 to nothing. Back for the fourth quarter right after this. The chase for the NASCAR Nextel Cup is on ABC tomorrow at 1 Eastern. Century 21, the gold standard. The extreme power of Energizer Lithium, the world's longest-lasting AA battery.